Hello. Welcome to what is most likely going to be the final Delta Rune Chapter 2 stream. It turns out there's probably going to be more Delta Rune in the future. So I can't say it's the last ever Delta Rune stream, which I'm glad for. Um, but it's the last one for a little while. <laughs> we'll see how long it is. Um, hi, welcome. I know that a bunch of you folks have been waiting here. Thank you so much for getting here early, even if I got here a little bit late. Um, um, hello, Candy, and anyone else who's here for the first time, welcome. Hi. I hope you enjoy your stay here. If you have seen me before, bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and do my little startup thingy. If you haven't, I will lay down some like ground rules just to make sure. Um, so first of all, if you haven't seen me before, please note the lore runs thing in the upper left corner. I moved it because it was in the way with Hades this week and folks couldn't see my health approaching zero. And I was like, that's a shame. You should be able to see how close I come to losing. But I didn't lose. But anyway, so now lore runs is in the upper left corner, which is fine. It's on the left corner because you see I am left handed. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I am very slow. I am the slowest. I there probably is someone out there who is a slower streamer than me. Maybe. Let me know if you find them and we can have like a sloth off. <laughs> there can be only one. No, no. Um, I can be the third slowest streamer. How does that sound? <laughs> but what I mean by that is I tend to talk a lot. Um, a lot of times it is related to the game, or at least it starts off being related to the game. Um, but there's a lot to say about the world and human nature with a lot of good games. So like, I like to talk about those things. So if you're interested in talking about like psychology or like, and we've talked about what restorative justice, growth mentalities, um, overcoming childhood abuse, things like that, they're rele relevant to, to Delta Rune, I think. Um, but uh, so that will be happening. So if you're like, oh my God, please press the button and go to the next screen. My apologies, friends. Although I should get us off of the bomb because if you can get off of the bomb and onto the um, load screen music, thank you, queen. It's just, it's so great. It's such a great head explode. We're gonna listen to this instead because this is a much better thing to listen to. <laughs> also the whoa, 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 make sure we're awake. No. Um, so, so please be patient. Um, if that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to you, um, this may not be the stream for you. Um, if you want to see some of it, but you are going to find that frustrating, there's no shame in choosing to watch it on YouTube later so you can skip. And I've learned, I've learned to put chapter markers on YouTube. So if you're like, this should be a chapter marker and you didn't chapter mark it, please let me know and I will add it. Somebody did that. Um, and I was very glad to know that. Likewise, those of you who are watching this, if you're like, this is a thing that Lauren should put a chapter marker for YouTube, like, even if you just like write down these are like the events that occurred that people might want to see, because otherwise it's just me guessing. I'm really not good at that. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to make my streams as relatively viewer friendly as I can while still being Lauren. Um, so that's the way we do things here. Um, so the no spoilers, no back seating policy, I'm pretty strict about, um, but I know most people are really excited and that's why they say things rather than trying to be malicious. So I won't be like mean to you, but I may be like, shh. And I've learned, especially with this game, that if I'm in really like, if I can get that sense, the chat is really excited about something, I stop looking at chat. I generally have a policy, final bosses and major bosses and things like don't look at chat, which frankly, in like a complicated and difficult game that requires like, reflexes and paying attention. Um, I can't look at chat anyway, <laughs> or I'm gonna die. I have died from looking at chat before playing video games. I'll try not to do that. Um, but yeah, so please, no spoilers, no backseating. Don't talk about things that people are speculating about post chapter two, because I haven't beaten chapter two and I don't know what's in chapter two. So when you start, um, when you start talking about things that people are speculating about, that tells me what's not going to be in chapter two. Um, so just when in doubt, if you're going to explode because of that, 
we have a stream spoilers channel on our Discord. There are folks who go there and they don't hang out in our Discord otherwise because like, there's a lot of Discords in the world and I don't want anyone to feel like I expect you to hang around. Although if you want to lurk like, or, or join in, like I think our Discord has really lovely people. Um, but you can just go there and hang out in stream spoilers, ask a mod, give me stream spoilers access, and they'll they'll give you the, like a little special gold star that means that you can do it, and then you can go in there, and I don't go in there, so you can yell spoilers and backseating to your heart's content. Yes, it is a containment zone for all of your spoilers, so please go there and do that. Um, <laughs> so that, I think, is all of the housekeeping stuff, which I think I'm gonna just do every big stream from now on because it's useful. Um, so with that said, like, I, like I said, I think today is going to actually be the final, final, final Deltarune Chapter 2 stream. Until there's more Deltarune. In which case, then there'll be Delta. I don't know how many, I don't know how I'm going to number that. I don't know what to do with my playlist on YouTube for Deltarune. So just, if you have thoughts, please share. Um, but otherwise, um... Oh my god, Axel doesn't think I'm gonna get it done since- Okay, look. There might be an additional stream to talk about things that folks want, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. What I what would I put that as, though? I don't know. I don't know, folks. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I have this mental block that's like nobody wants to watch. And nobody wants to see these things. So I'm just- just discount- just like, discount what this brain says about these things. Chrono thought that I could finish the game a couple of weeks ago, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> he underestimated me. <clears throat> All right, so diving in shortly. Um, things to note last week was really exciting. <laughs> we didn't we didn't do a lot last week. But we also did a lot last week. Last week was really satisfying because one of the most interesting things for me has been Spamton because it was really clear that something is going on bigger and better and more behind the scenes with what's like, like he's not just like a goofy, obnoxious me, 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 <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, no, I was really excited about him because you could tell there was something more going on there, um, but I didn't know what it was. But I do understand why you folks were so backseat about making sure that I saw there was a door in the garbage dump. Aren't you glad that my contrariness did not fully kick in there? Oh! This is the save. This is the save. Remember, I saved several different saves. Don't worry. We're good. We're good. Do you not see the over 2,000 minute marker? <sighs> That's a warning. That's a warning. It's like, it's like animals having bright colors so that you know that they're dangerous, so you don't eat them. The 2,000 minute marker of my Deltarune playthrough is a warning. <laughs> Okay, Nana, 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 has redeemed posture check. Yes, so I'll sit up. To be fair, that's like two games, <laughs> kind of. Oh man, some of you think we're gonna beat it. Some of you think we're not gonna beat it. All right, well, if I were a betting type person, I would be like, place your bets. Is Lauren gonna beat the game or not? Nana way. Okay, thank you. I can say that. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. So last time. We, oh, okay, sorry. I do have a hard time, especially if it's a name with like a cultural language origin that I'm not super familiar with, but I never intend to be disrespectful. So please, uh, please, please bear with me if I get your names wrong, any of you, I will do my best. Male, male date, uh, see, this is what I mean, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for following. Um, do I want, do we want to set up a channel points bet? Hold on. That's a thing I think that Flutie Bot can do. Hold on. Betting. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. Betting on will Lauren beat Delta Rune chapter two today, November 6th. 
Option, yes. Option, no. Option, banana. Okay. I don't know how this is gonna work. I've never done one of these before. Let's do it. Let's see how that goes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just type in zero. Um, anyway, there you go. <laughs> Feel free to bet on that. I don't know. Oh man. I have no idea how this is gonna work. I don't know if, what is the, what is the, how does one do bets? How does one do, how does one, how does one, I don't know, folks. Okay, well, hopefully that's working. If, okay, you've got it, you've got it, okay. Somebody read the instructions and it wasn't me. Thank you so much, friends. Um, so, 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 what was I saying before we set up the vet? Yeah, so last time, we, we took on Spamton, which was interesting because I'd had some theories. Actually, actually, hold on, hold on. Actually, I wanna, I wanna do something. If you guys will forgive me, will you forgive me? I have, I have a thing I wanna do. I had an idea. Hold on. No, okay, so, oh, thank you, Marvin. So this is gonna, hold on. We're gonna do something. I'm gonna close this because we're gonna listen to something else. All right, folks. No, so the thing is, no, 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 not that, not that. The thing is, the thing is, Spamton's theme, Big Shot, is a big puzzle. It is a puzzle, a, a musical puzzle. And so when I first heard it, I was like, I can tell that it is a big puzzle. And I can't figure out what all of the pieces in it are. So I had some theories and I had some thoughts. And I was like, it's interesting because it's got the dummy theme going on and it's got some other stuff that I think is from Undertale. It had something that I thought was from Toho, which I don't know very well, but it sounded kind of like Big Apple to me, which is the only Toho song that I think I know offhand because it's been memed like crazy. Um, but I was trying really hard to figure out all of the different pieces of the puzzle because like, if you know me or if you can guess from the fact that I have flute in my stream name, I'm a musician. Um, and so I think a lot about music. Um, bad apple. Excuse me. Look, I told you I don't really know Toho, and you now you've got you've got conclusive evidence that I don't. So the thing is, um, at some point I managed to figure out that Spamton Neo and Metaton Neo have some similarities, and once I kind of figured that out, I realized that's why some of the gameplay against Spamton actually matches some of the gameplay against Metaton. That explains the legs. They're very distinctive legs. Um, and, um, and there was another melody in there that I was trying to figure out and I couldn't figure it out. And I, so I figured out like, like there's, there's the, the theme, theme of Neo, I think is what it's called, which, which I knew is f not a song that I knew super well because that was not played in my playthrough of Undertale, nor will it be, sorry folks, still not gonna do the No Mercy run. Um, but, uh, but I was like, okay, I figured this out and we got confirmation on that actually, that there was some connection between Metaton, who I think drew a design for a robot body, um, that they, he wanted. Um, and he, uh, he was in the computer lab drawing that presumably, um, and Swatch helped out with that because Swatch is presumably some sort of a paint program, um. But, uh, but Metaton never was able to get that body, and, and so the body was there, and Spamton wound up getting connected to it. And I'm not exactly sure on all of the details, but there's, a, there's one more component 
musically speaking, power of Neo. Okay. See, all right, look again, I haven't played, I haven't played the no mercy run. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so the thing is like, we're going to listen to, we're going to listen to this. Okay. Give me a moment. So this is like the Mortal Kombat intro. Cause I have an idea. So the instrumentation here is taken directly from the dummy music. And like the rhythm stuff that's going on is very reminiscent of dummy and all of like there's an entire like group of songs that all have to do with the ghosts mostly um, that use that same melody um, and then also spider dance like it's intentionally referencing a number of songs from undertale That's the that's the neo theme. But there's some other stuff in there. Yes, Spider Dance sharing that melody is a little bit strange, but Spider Dance is everyone else's favorite version of it, but not mine. And again, the instrumentation there is. So like, I haven't heard Mad Mew Mew, but I would listen to it. And then this one is in case you somehow missed it, which I did the first time around. They're like, hold on. Straight up, exactly like it sounds in Undertale. So if you, if you somehow missed the fact that it's the same thing you already know. We'll give you a hint. Well, the direct sample is jarring, but it also is, it's a hint. It lets you know that there's more to the puzzle. Like this. And then we go back to the Mortal Kombat thing. But the thing is, the thing is, there's another piece. I have now picked apart some of the different Undertale bits, but let's see. So if you listen to this, there's a melody. That repeats. So I have an idea, folks, because I've been trying to solve that particularly. I've been trying to figure out what is that? Is that so? So um, hold on. OK, so what we also have is so I thought that was Phantom's theme, but there's something else in there. I really like this melody, by the way. Okay, so the Mortal Kombat intro is in here. So I hope you don't mind we're doing this on stream, but. I'm really interested in this stuff. I could have done this off stream, but I didn't want to. As it's the, so it's like the same general voice samples. Okay, so listening to this, there, I feel like there's one more part in Big Shot, though. So we're going to listen to this one more time. Okay, so this is in Now's Your Chance to Be. Now's, now's Your Chance to Be A, excuse me. Because I was like, I know this song and I've heard it before. Like, I can sing along with this melody, and I believe I sang along with it during the first Spamson fight, because it's really catchy. And 
And then this is back to the Mortal Kombat section. And then we're back to Now Is Your Chance to Be. This is... What's that? I have a guess. I have a guess, folks. I have a guess. So we're gonna listen to it now. Not so far. I don't think so. All right, that's what I wanted to do here. Okay. <laughs> All right, YouTube, we're done with you. Bye bye, YouTube window. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I was like, there's two pieces. There's two pieces. And I have an idea of what they might be. <laughs> and I was like, okay, probably one of them is going to be Spamton's theme. And it's the one that I knew that I'd heard before. But then there was another piece and I was like, hmm, I have a couple of ideas about what those could be. So it turns out, turns out, I guess we can go ahead and open up Deltarune again. Hopefully I didn't break it by closing it. Otherwise, this is going to be an awfully short stream. Fortunately, it turns out that I didn't mess it up. Hi, hello. Yeah, so like, thank you, Queen. The Queen really wants to explode. All right, her head explode. Um, yeah, so like, I hope you folks are all right with the fact that I did that on stream. So I don't like the majority of the world revolving, and I'm gonna hold to that because, like, as I was listening to it, I was like, there's no, still no melody, still no melody. Maybe this isn't it. But then it got to a melody partway through. Um, yes, everyone needs a hot take and mine is that I don't like the world revolving. No, but I like, I do actually like that melody. Um, it's interesting. Um, I feel like there's so much else going on with the world revolving and unlike, so my first reaction to Big Shot was, I don't like it musically, but I'm fascinated by it as a puzzle. And so like... I uh, I wasn't I wasn't the hugest the hugest fan of of it musically, but I didn't mind it because it was clearly doing something. Um, and so I'm like, the point of Big Shot is not to be a cool song. It's not. It's frankly not. It's it's Toby Fox being very clever and wanting us to figure out his cleverness, which is why he puts direct direct here's exactly as you hear it in Undertale. Because that was the thing where I was like, wait. And then I started thinking through all the rest of it. Um, but uh, but it was, a, it was a great puzzle to solve. Because I was like, if you make it beautiful, if you make it musical, you're kind of missing, for me, the point of it, which is for it to be a puzzle, for it to be interesting, for it to tell part of the story of Spamton. There is something in there that you need to figure out. And it's all the pieces are there, everything is there, and he gives you a little hint to get you started. Like, it's brilliant, it's so cool, so cool. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that. I'm sure somebody has, because there are very, very many video games in the world. Um, but uh, 
but I've never like I've never I've never seen anyone do that myself where like if you if you tease apart the pieces of the song you can figure out something about the story um, it's really 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 cool um, and so now that I understand the pieces that go into it and how musical they are, I can wrap my head around how a person would cover it and maybe do something really clever with that. I would love to see, and I will go listening to all of my friends' covers of Big Shot because everybody has covered Big Shot. Um, but, uh, but like, I don't know that I would ever be like, I just want to listen to Big Shot because it's fun to listen to. Like, that's not kind of what, that's not what it does. It's, it's interesting. It's super interesting, but it's not like just like music to listen to all the time. Um, but, uh, but so like, oh my God, rest in PC. Oh my God, Matt, that's amazing. <laughs> um, basically, because like Big Shot is, is a whole bunch of stuff. Um... It's a pile of stuff and it's super, super cool. And I think you could make it into a beautiful musical thing if you really wanted to. Again, I feel like the coolness of it is the fragmented nature of it. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't know. M maybe I could, maybe I could do a cover of it just to see what happens. Um, but like, there, I mean, there's plenty of music out there that I'm like, this is super cool in the context of what it is. But if I'm like taking a walk and I want a soundtrack, that's not the song I'm gonna put on. Um, so like, it's not like a casual listening song. Um, so the thing with the world revolving is that it's not a puzzle like that. And it's, 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 okay, it has a melody, apparently, but I didn't recognize it. And it's funny because I did actually fight Gerbil. Did I do Gerbil? Did I do Gerbil twice? I feel like I did Gerbil twice. I could see Big Shot being good workout music. Yeah, so I did, uh, so I did, I fought Gerbil twice and I didn't have, and that melody didn't stick with me. Um, partly because there's just a lot of other stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. Ruha has redeemed stretch. Oh, everybody stretch. Your arms over your head. <sighs> so, the world revolving isn't a bad song. It's just not my thing, as I've said a million times. Um, and, uh, like... I, hmm, there's clearly a connection. Oh, several of you have redeemed hydrate. You are investing in me taking a bathroom break later, aren't you? That's okay though, I also need to retain my voice. Um, so like, so like the world revolving for me, I, well, clearly it has a connection to like, there's a connection between gerbil, I'm sorry, gerbil. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a connection between gerbil and Spamton. Beyond the fact that they are optional bosses. Which is way better than them just randomly being optional bosses. No, it's clear that gerbil has something to do with something. So my question, not to you, don't answer this question, chat, please. Unless you want to yell together and stream spoilers. My question is... Gerbil seems to think that he's all powerful. Gerbil seems to think that he is so powerful and dangerous that he's had to be locked away, or rather, the rest of the world has been walk locked away from him. Um, but he is convinced that he is all powerful. Um, so then the question is Has he contributed to Spamton in some way? Like, like, is it that there is a thread uniting him and Spamton? Or is he the thread that will be uniting whatever mystery bosses we get in the future? Um, and like, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, like the, the relationship between them is not immediately clear. Like is, is Gerbil actually a more powerful entity than just an optional boss? And is he going around messing with things? And so he was locked up because he couldn't be trusted. Or is he just another optional boss, the way Spamton, and Spamton is another optional boss? Because we know that there's the knight, and the knight has clearly caused a lot of damage, but I believe the knight has caused damage recently. Because it's like the queen didn't used to want to put people in battery acid. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I think that the king has not always been evil. Um, 
And so, uh, yeah, and yes, yes, just as a reminder to everybody, please do not actually answer these questions. And no, I haven't beaten Gerbil. And at some point I will talk about that maybe I will beat Gerbil. Maybe I'll beat Gerbil. Um, but, uh, but like, I, I wonder, like, is, is, is Gerbil the big, the big bad of the optional bosses? Or is Gerbil being controlled by the big bad of the optional bosses? And what do the what does the big bad of the optional bosses have to do with the overarching plot? Because again, we we know that the that the king and the queen have both presumably been corrupted by the knight, um, which means we still have to figure out who the ace is. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Jessen. Um, so like. And I wonder about that, because thinking about it thematically, Spamton is through and through like the digital world, you know, like he is specifically digital internet, like late 90s, early 2000s culture stuff like so he's very consistent. And so he's clearly of his world. In fact, he was a piece of his world that got tainted by he, someone or something on the phone. Hold on. We have one of those. Sorry, chat. I bet if you do something interesting with that, I bet it's a hint. I bet if you like speed it up or flip it or something like that, I bet, I bet it's actually a reference to something. Yeah, garbage noise was mentioned somewhere else too. Yes, we're just gonna listen to Sakuraba. Harpsichord Sakuraba, which is great. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna like cover a lot of music from this game. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yes, Lost Wanderer, that's it. The, 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 the guy who went to pay his respects to Spamton mentioned that the phone had garbage noise. So like, yes, thank you, please, for refraining from answering my question. La 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 la. la. La 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 I'm sorry I got distracted by this music. No, but like, but seriously, like, does, but he's not actually a circus clown. He's a joker which is a playing card, which is consistent with the world that he is part of. So Gerbil is of the world in the same way that Spamton is of the world. A jester. Yeah, I know, but, but look at, look at, look at the Joker on a playing card. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to look this up on the phone. I swear that the Joker on a playing card looks like a jester. Yeah. 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 Look at that. That's one. Oops. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. See. See. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This. This. This is what gerbil is. Look at that. Look. Look. See. Joker. Joker. See? Sorry. Just ignore the fact that I keep things mirrored. So like... So like he's definitely uh he's definitely a playing card which makes sense and if i remember correctly the role that a joker plays in a card deck it's the trump card right it, the rules don't apply to it right hold on we're gonna look this up we're gonna look at this what does a joker 
Okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. Wikipedia is going to tell us what to do. Found in most French suited card decks. Okay. The Joker originated in the United States during the Civil War and was created as a trump card. Often acts as a wild card, but may have other functions. A wild card is any card that may be used to represent another card of cards. What is the use of the Joker in card games? Many card, ga many card games omit the Joker. That's been my experience. Okay. Jokers are often used as informal replacements for lost or damaged cards in a deck by simply noting the lost card's rank and suit on the Joker. The Joker is the highest trump, making it one of the most important in the game. Is a wild card allowed to represent other existing cards. Joker's wild originates from this practice. The Joker can be an extremely beneficial or an extremely harmful card. Wild card, wild card, alternative version, wild card. Beats all other cards, a point card, wild card, skip card that forces the next player to lose a turn. In spades, which is a game like hearts. If you'll recall, spades, it, those are our main, uh, I mean, okay, Lancer and his dad. Uncommon, but can, can fulfill one of two roles. When playing with three or six players, added to make the cards deal evenly, either junk cards playable any time that cannot win a trick, or they count as the two highest trumps. There's the big joker and the litter, little joker. They can also be used in conjunction with teammates' cards to create a pseudo-trump. An ace of hearts and joker played together would be counted as an ace of spades, inferior only to a natural ace of spades. So, like... In other games, a person might not find looking up a related thing on Wikipedia to be a potential source of lore. However, <laughs> this is Toby Fox we're talking about, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had put like layers and layers of like what exactly Gerbil does. <laughs> okay. But so he's very clearly, um, and because the jester, the joker, has specific purpose in spades, which is, again, our primary suit in chapter one, um, that's probably, that's probably significant. But yeah, so, so, so Gerbil is, is a trump card who can do anything. He can be anyone and fill any role. He's more powerful than anyone else. Um, so that's intentional. Why is it the world revolving? I mean, he says that the rest of the world was locked up against him. So his perception of what the world is versus himself is, uh... I don't think the world is actually revolving around you when you have that fight. I think that he's revolving you. Because his concept of the world versus himself relative is has been proven to or seems weird. He might be right, actually. The rest of the world might have been locked up from him. I don't know. But he thinks that he's all powerful. But he's also very much of his world. So it's possible. Nuclear mechanic, thank you so much for 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 subscribing, friend. <laughs> In spin mode, thank you, Hitsuki. No, I wonder, like... Yeah, well, I mean, the music, the World Revolution from Chrono Trigger, like, that that name would make sense, and Toby Fox is clearly a fan of Super Nintendo RPGs, um, so I could see him taking inspiration from that um, for the name and being like, Heh, I sure do like Chrono Trigger. <laughs> um, I mean, like, the opera reference for the entire section of Undertale, which I will never get over. Thanks, Toby Fox, you made that for me. Yeah, but so then the question is, um, did something come along offering gerbil power the same way that something came along offering Spamton power? He wants to stand tall enough to see heaven, the outside world. And gerbil wants to get to the outside world too. 
and I really want to know when I don't have the pieces and I don't think we're going to get them yet. You know? How frustrating is that? <laughs> I want to know. I did beat Spamton. I beat Spamton on my second try. I'm very proud of myself. Twice. Twice I fought him. The first time I think I did pretty well. And the second one, I think I did really well. It was really kind of nerve wracking at the end, but we did it. I was really excited about that because I don't usually think of myself as being a good gamer, but apparently I beat Spamton on my second try and I beat the, uh, the, 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 as far as I know, end boss of Hades um, on like my 39th run, which is apparently actually pretty fast. So apparently I, I'm not, the, okay, the teacups, part of the problem with the teacups is that I didn't, I didn't play the tutorial teacup. So I had to figure it out as I went. I definitely died more to the teacups than anything else. But yes, yeah, so so yes, I, I did. I got I got I I, I, I have successfully looped um, to try to avoid spoiling um, Hades. Yes, I had a I, I got to have a little victory screen. Um, it's very exciting. That was Thursday. It just went up on YouTube this morning. If you want to catch up on that, yeah, I really want to see the rest of Delta Rune. So the thing is with Delta Rune is like. I liked the first chapter, but it didn't really stick with me the way Undertale did. And I was like, I don't know if I'm just not going to love Deltarune as much. Um, but I think a large part of that was at what point it came out in my life. Um, and also, this game has done a lot to build on it. Although I did get a lot more out of Deltarune Chapter 1 the second time through. So, that's true. I did play the teacup with a with a handicap because I'm a, I'm a good player. Because <laughs> I'm silly, alright? Uh, yeah, I really want to know more about what's going on. I like I have all these ideas. Like I want to like write fanfic and do covers. Unfortunately, I can't draw fan art of Toby Fox games because I can't draw anthro stuff very well. So like anything that's kind of more of like a, a monstery type thing, I can't draw. I've tried. I tried to draw the goats because I love the goats. Like, there were no, no, no successful Dreamer fan art from me, so, <laughs> tragically. Um, I could draw Newbert, that's true. <laughs> ba -da -da. <sighs> yeah, no, but, okay, so, like, when furries would commission me to do art, it would be, like, so far away from, like, hardcore furry, like, not super furriness. There's a scale of furriness, of anthroness. And like, I can't really get much farther than cat girls. And it's very sad because I, I, I love the furry community. Um, and I used to take art commissions and they would be like, oh, you seem nice, can you do art for me? And I'm like, it will disappoint you, my friend. I'm so sorry. It is a challenge that I cannot, I cannot do. Everyone always talks about Newbert because everyone likes Newbert. I don't know, folks. He's the opposite of Jerry. <laughs> Newbert is the anti-Jerry. I, look, I was doing relevant stuff. I was doing relevant stuff, friends. I was dissecting the song Big Shot. That's relevant. That's relevant. Now we're on a gameplay screen. And it's been less than an hour since I started. <laughs> it's relevant, it's relevant. And I'll put that as a chapter on YouTube. Lauren analyzes Big Shot. <laughs> so if you want to hear that, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to do that. <sighs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm like dying to know what's going on with the optional bosses, folks. Do you know what that means? That means I'm gonna have to get better at bullet hulls. <sighs> I don't wanna, but yes, we're gonna go back to gerbil at some point. <sighs> I don't have to like it. Watch me like wind up like having like a like trauma bond experience with the world revolving. Maybe that's why everyone else likes it and I don't. 
<laughs> no, I mean, okay, okay. I will take on this gameplay challenge. I am inclined to say it is literally impossible for me to beat Gerbil. I'm, I'm inclined to say there's no point in me even trying. There's no way I could possibly do it. I couldn't possibly do it. It's a hard bullet hell thing. I can't play bullet hells. And I feel like when I tried playing it, I got absolutely literally nowhere. But like, folks. I beat, I did beat Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a slow and methodical game. It's all about figuring out patterns while taking time. Um, see, Stennis, that's what I'm talking about. I think people trauma bonded with the world revolving. Um, I feel like, I feel like though, as much as I'm like, it's impossible for me to do it. Hades is a gameplay game. It's fast. There's lots of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in that game. Okay, no, but so with this, the things I don't think Celeste counts because I was able to use assist mode and that helped. Likewise with Dark Souls, I was able to summon help. Um, Hades, Hades, I think is, is, I've heard people say Hades has things in common with a bullet hell. Um, and I can kind of see that a little bit. Um, I'm still having a really hard time with some of the regular random encounters in this game. And I don't think my reflexes are very good. So what I'm good at in games where I'm relatively good at anything is running away. Even when I wasn't good at games, the one thing that I have is running away, hiding, and trying not to get hit. I'm not good at hitting. Um, but I figured out the patterns of Spamton. Now, one thing that Spamton has going on for him is that he gets easier the longer it goes if you can get like 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 hit the warrior where the wario wear one you can just make that one not do anything um i feel like i have terrible reaction time too kane but i have been told by viewers who have watched me play that i do not seem to have terrible reaction time and as i've said i'm not a good judge of myself so, I can't say for sure that I can beat Gerbil. But I feel like it's possible that I'm evolving. Thanks, Arthur. It's possible that I might be able to do it. And I really want to know everything we know about the optional bosses. I want to know, but I want to win it fair and square, you know? I want to add it to my brain in the method that it's supposed to be added to my brain. So, thanks, Zio. Yeah. And it might be a good way for me to, like, overcome some of my brain gremlins. You know? Like, brain gremlins tell us all sorts of lies about what we can and can't do. Brain gremlins... Oh, I see I've got another minute that I have to redeem hydrate. Brain gremlins come in a lot of different flavors, none of which are particularly helpful, although I think a lot of times they think they're being helpful. Brain gremlins is a term that I use and others use if you're not familiar with it. <clears throat> When there's that little voice in your head that's like telling you everyone hates you, or you're gonna fail, or there's no way you can do this, or like everyone is talking bad about you, or whatever it is. Brain gremlins. Like, 
they're really nefarious little critters. <clears throat> And I think that they are there for what is meant to be, or brain goblins, brain worms, there you go. Um, I think that in a way they're meant to be protective. Like I suspect <clears throat> mind goblins. Oh man, okay, well, I'm, first of all, I'm just really glad to know that other streamers talk about things like that because I think that the more of us that talk about these things, the better we'll all be able to fight them. Cause A, we can swap tips on how to fight them and B, just like, the more you hear that everybody is fighting with things like this, the less likely you are to be like, well, clearly I'm actually bad. Because you're like, well, no, but but all these other people, their brains are telling them the same stuff, and I don't think that could be true, so maybe it's not true for me, too. <clears throat> yeah, no, for me, spam to, things, things, things in, in 2D space are, <clears throat> or in like one, I guess that's 1D movement is easier so much but there are like i don't know i don't know i feel like maybe playing spam to neo helped me level up something a little bit um but yes yeah, so so brain goblins brain gremlins brain worms the little nasty voice in your head i think that those i think that we develop those as a means of self-defense because a lot of unhealthy things in your brain um Axel, Axel's message, sorry. Um, all right, I have to drink some, okay, Arthur. So Axel's message. I keep telling my friends that they are great and better than the voices in their head, but clearly my voices are honest about how horrible I am. That's like the, that's the cognitive dissonance that we can hold about that sort of thing ourselves. Um, yeah, the phone attack was really hard for me. Um, but yeah, no, so, so I feel like a lot of times the things in our brains are coping mechanisms defensive mechanisms they exist for a reason um and they maybe kept us alive when we were younger kept us together when we were younger um helped us hurt less or at least thought they were going to help us hurt less um but as we get you know more in control of our lives and our minds i think it's worth reevaluating your coping mechanisms and things like that and being like okay let's 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 marie kondo some of this stuff you know, thank you, Brain Gremlins, for trying to protect me when life was hard. Thank you, Brain Gremlins, for trying to make disappointment less painful for me so that when I was more vulnerable and more, what's the word, fragile, um, you, you tried to soften the blow by keeping me a little bit lower overall. Thank you for, for your intent. Possibly it, su possibly it succeeded. Possibly it didn't, but that was the intent. Thank you, brain. Um, but I don't need that anymore, brain. Urchin, thank you so much. I'm glad that you're here alive. Welcome, friends, and anyone else who's over here from YouTube, even if you're lurking. If you came here to try to see what might be the end. I'm sorry, I'm on a talking tear, but we all knew this was going to happen, didn't we? Um, like, welcome. Hello. A lot of folks here came over from YouTube. I'm very grateful for the YouTube crowd, because I've made a lot of friends. So, um... But yeah, I think it's good to, uh, to, again, recognize where these things come from. So don't, like, hate them for being there. Like, don't even, don't even set them on fire. Hug them. Thank them. And then when they start telling you their things again, just be like, thanks, friend, but I don't think I'm going to listen to you now. Would you like a sandwich? Offer your brain gremlins sandwiches. I like peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and honey. Peanut butter, honey, and banana. Like, just give me some peanut butter. Um, yeah. You can't hate yourself into being a version of you that you can love. Is, I think, a really powerful statement. And, uh, I think that also kind of goes for these things. I mean, if a part of you is beating you up, beating that part of you up is not actually necessarily going to reduce the amount of beating up. So like, try to, try to, try to defang it with kindness. And uh, figure out where it's coming from. And make it no longer fight. So okay. My brain gremlins have internalized a list of things I can't do, that I'm not good at, that I'll never be good at. So why bother even trying? 
And I can tell you straight up where that comes from. Um, my dad's philosophy on things is, and he got this from his father, I love my grandpa, I love my dad, I don't agree with them about a great many things. Um, hi Captain Cream Puff, your name is adorable. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so like, my grandpa used to tell my aunt who's an artist, you know, real artists can just pick up and draw. They can just pick up their sketchbook and a pencil and they can just draw. So if you have to work at it, you're not really an artist. So there's only, there's not really much point in trying if you can't just straight up do that. And so she stopped drawing for a long time. She stopped painting for a long time. She eventually picked it back up. She's incredible. My aunt is an incredible artist. Like she's phenomenal. And I know for her, there's a degree of grief and frustration about what could have happened if she'd actually kept up her art and not listened to what her father said. Um, but, uh, but like, I was also kind of raised with the idea of like, there are the things you're good at and there are the things you aren't good at. And if you're not good at something, why do it? Kind of. Because you're not good at it. And so and my dad, apparently, when I was growing up, was always like a both proud and jealous of me being able to write stories. Because apparently when he was a kid, he always wanted to write stories. He's like, if you told me growing up, if you'd asked me what I wanted to be, I would have told you I wanted to be a novelist. So he's like, you were, had a, clearly like an affinity for writing since you were very, very young. Um, I've always been good at writing. Like, it's very hard for me to say I'm good at things, but I'm good at writing. Like, I've always had a knack for it, for putting words. Shockingly, putting words together is a thing that I do a lot. <laughs> um, I, I left to my own devices. I also write lots of, lots and lots and lots of words. Um, but uh, so my dad was very supportive of my writing. Um, and then so he's getting to the point where he can retire, and he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. And I was like, maybe you should you should try writing. And I had told him before, like, oh, I didn't realize, because he told me in my, like, late 20s, mid to late 20s, this whole thing about how he, 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 he really, like, appreciated and was proud of and a little jealous of me being a writer. And I was like, well, why didn't you write? Why don't you write? And he's like, well, I'm not good at it. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you practice at it and you get better. And he's like, yeah, well, I have to work super hard to write my, my papers that I have to write for work. And I'm like, yes, I have to work hard to write things too. Um, so I told him, like, a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, when you retire, maybe you should take some writing classes. And he was like, no, I'm not good at writing. And I'm like, but you've taught yourself how to write papers for your work, and they're good and do very well. Like, you can do the same thing with writing fiction if you want to. Like, writing is a thing that I'm good at, but I also have a lot of training at it, too. Like, I've been practicing it so much, and I've also got, like, I have multiple degrees in it at this point, folks. Like... And did I, did I need those degrees to be a writer? No, I didn't, but I do need practice and work at it. Um, and like, so with art, I'm not the greatest artist and I don't have the most natural talent. I have some natural ability. I'm also just really bad at design. Usually design and art skills go together or, or talents go together. I don't have both of them. I'm not a designer. Um, although I am now passable at creating basic design stuff for work because I've worked with enough designers that I can make a thing that gets the information across. Um, but like, I don't know. We did talk about this, uh, Matt, about talent as a binary where you have it or you don't have it. But there's, but there's, there's this, there's this idea of, I think Samovar, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, yeah, well, I think that this is maybe like the sequel conversation to what we talked about with Birdly because it's definitely related. But there's this idea of like, like don't don't bother doing it if if you're not good at it, and so you just kind of write off entire sections of things that might be fun. Um, yeah, talent is based stats. Was that Alex Mukala? I think that was Alex Alex Mukala. Incredible, like one of my favorite video game cover folks. Incredibly talented. Um, but, uh, one of the things that I find super inspiring, I'm going to bring this up because he's brought it up before. Chrono is like, I'm not a good painter, but I love to paint. So he just paints and he has so much fun. I'm a little jealous. I wish I could do that with things. And I want to be able to do that. Find things that I'm not great at and, and do them despite that. 
which is really hard for me. But another thing that's hard is it's 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 hard to get through that I'm not good at it and I have to like the the worst thing in the world for me is being seen not being good at something unless I can be like I'm terrible at it and then it's funny that I'm terrible at it. So like being okay at video games would be kind of hard for me. Being unremarkable at video games, like, it's like, no, I'm bad. I'm bad at video games because I've always had bad reflexes. I've always had terrible spatial reasoning. But it turns out that even things like spatial reasoning, you can get better at with practice. Thank you, Talos Principal, for teaching me that. Man, I love watercolor. Except that I use them kind of like colored pencils. Everything I just use, like, Prismacolor colored pencils. That's my medium of choice. Um, yeah. I think that that's a really good point, Mega Spell. We shouldn't aim to try to draw a good picture. We should just aim to draw. And that's kind of why I emphasize with people who want to write, I emphasize the importance of what I call a zero draft, which I think I've talked about on stream before. A zero draft. I wanted to do, actually, back when I was doing those, like, uh, I don't know, like self help video stuff on YouTube, um, I wanted to put together one about the value of a zero draft, how important it is to just get the thing done. Worry about making it good later. Um, like, I don't know, but, but so, so I can like, I don't know, it's like singing along with like making up things, me making up music on the spot on stream is a thing that I've been doing over the past few years to kind of get more comfortable with the fact that I'm going to sing wrong notes and it's fine. Nobody really cares. Like, oh, oh, oh. It's okay if you make a mistake. Like, I will never forget watching my phenomenally talented, phenomenally skilled, incredible and amazing, musically expressive, powerful performer and full of love for what he does, friend Doug, Drum Ultima, Doug Perry, um, who has dropped by a few times and every time he shows up, I, I, I yell about how great he is. Um, but he's the one who, who tried to teach me how to overcome my, my absolute fear of improvisation. And he was like... The secret is, like, it's okay to make mistakes. And I remember once watching him improvise something and being like, oh, he just played a note that's really sour. And it's fine. Oh. All right, Chrono. <laughs> okay, I advanced the text box. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, Doug is still amazing, and he still is a beautiful, powerful musician, but he, 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 even he improvises wrong notes sometimes, and it's fine. It's like, oh, okay, you can make mistakes, and that's fine. Um, but also, like, I think it's the lack of that growth mentality growing up that's, like, why I'm like, I can't play hard games. I can't do that. I can't play bullet hells. Like, maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Some things are very hard to overcome. Like there are physical limitations sometimes. And I do have some blocks that make it very hard for me to do, for example, physical activities like dancing or sports. I have a weird disconnect between my brain and my body that makes it very hard. And I have to have absolutely everything spelled out. You have to tell me exactly the position my foot should be because you can assume a lot of people will kind of, if they try to make the motion, like things will kind of happen naturally to a certain degree and that doesn't happen with me and it's very frustrating um and very very stressful um but you can do a lot more around that sort of thing so yeah yeah one of my friends who's incredibly talented and does a lot of wonderful things he keeps posting photos on facebook about like the gorgeous dinners that he makes and i was i commented i was like man you seem like you're a really good cook and he was like i love it it's the only hobby that i have that i haven't started monetizing and i was like oh i feel that i feel that those of us who are millennials at least we're kind of we've grown up with the idea that you have to try to be successful with fame or fortune and all of your hobbies everything needs to be a side gig everything needs to be trying as hard as it can um and i think that's super unhealthy but it's definitely in me yeah, blue glass, that's fair. That's a good way of putting it, too. Oh, man, soul and light. If you have that same problem, too, I don't know what it is, but I guess our brains have similar wiring. <sighs> yes, making... Well, the thing is, like, I cook a lot. Or at least I used to. These days, I've been having some problems keeping up with, like, eating normal meals. Like, there are things that we struggle with sometimes, and eating is one of the ones that I struggle with. 
that's an entire separate conversation. But yeah, no, cooking for yourself is good. It's healthier for you. It saves money. And like, it's cool to be like, oh, I can do this. Because a lot of people feel like cooking is this like super scary hard thing because you have to like follow fancy recipes and get expensive ingredients and no techniques. It's like, actually, you need some basic knowledge and then you can kind of just throw stuff around and kind of make it work and also have to be okay with sometimes it doesn't turn out um so when i do cooking streams which i'd like to do another one um at some point uh maybe i'll do one sometime soon um maybe i like to do cooking streams that are like let's learn how to cook a thing a bit because like spontaneous cooking is super useful and skills that you learn can be like applied like like if you learn to make this thing then you can learn to make things that are similar to it oh no pixel stick okay first of all that's also a cute name what is with all of you folks and your great names i really enjoy them yeah so like i understand being stressed about that so it's kind of good maybe to start with smaller things cook with somebody else um and there are going to be some failed dishes and that's okay um, I used to have a joke with my with my ex that like every other curry I made like like the even curries were good and the odd curries were bad Sometimes it happens. I'd be like, okay, if, if this dinner botches, I'll make pizza or I'll, I'll order as pizza or something like that um, Yeah Pastries yeah pastries. I would probably need a recipe. I do a lot of baking without recipes, but that's me trying to overcome my inner perfectionist Oh yes, before you can draw a cartoon elephant, you need to really know how to draw an elephant. Yes, before you can draw from real life, or before you can draw stylized, it is good to learn to draw not stylized, and then you can choose to stylize that how you'd like. Um. <clears throat> Blank spot, I wonder if you have a friend who could help, help you get past a certain point in cooking so that you could feel more confident about at least getting some basics. Um. Well, congratulations, Stolen Light. Realizing that you aren't, like, dependent on recipes because you've internalized and learned so much that you've kind of added to your own, like, inner sense for something, that's really cool. And that isn't something... People aren't born... People aren't born able to just improvise music. People aren't born just able to improvise cooking. You don't just, like, come into this world fully formed as a child with, like, a mastered sense of something. You have to gather an understanding of things before you can start doing that. And I think that's a mistake that people make. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, Urchin, that's, I think that's, I think that's totally fine though. I've definitely broken things that people couldn't understand how I broke it because everybody does it right. But yes, learning the rules before you break them, that's valid too. <clears throat> When I was in, when I was a kid, like in middle school, I made brownies and I didn't put flour in. I just put sugar in twice. So we all have our stories of things that we did that are a little silly. Um, Lost Wanderer, I definitely learned by doing as well. Like it's much easiest. Like there's different styles of learning that have been identified recently, and by recently I mean like the past like 15 years or so, maybe 20 years. Um, and so a lot of teachers, as they like learn to teach learn to teach to different the different learning styles and one of those I think it's is it kinesthetic learning something like that which is learning by doing and that works for me too yeah so like this is good stuff all this to say maybe I'll give gerbil another few tries because I feel like there's no point in trying because there's no way I could actually get any better at it but maybe if I don't Think about it that way. Maybe if I try to approach each, each try, I try to get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. If I, if I, if I treat it like the way I treat a run in Hades, where even if I fail this run, I've gotten some bit of lore, some bit of something keeping me moving forward. And that is a success. Maybe if I think about that with gerbil, maybe I can do it. Maybe I'll need a hint. That's okay too. Sometimes that happens. Um, fighting gerbil is like cooking. Maybe so. Would you guys join me if I tried that? Yeah. I think we could do that. Yeah. Even if I'm like dying, but I'm like, oh, you do the thing, you do the thing, you do the thing. All right. After this chapter, yes, after this chapter, Samovar, don't worry. <laughs> All right, let me... Yeah, I don't, I don't attack in these games. 
I don't attack anyone in a Toby Fox game. You know how in Undertale you have to attack somebody? You actually are required to fight. Do you have any idea how many times I died first trying not to fight and then trying to figure out how fighting worked? Because I'd literally never seen that screen before. Okay, I guess some of you have seen that. Spent a long time. Yes, we're cooking gerbils. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch anyone else do it. I will do it myself, and if I can't figure it out, I will ask for a small hint. Yes, I think I spent an hour trying not to attack him, and then another like half hour or hour trying to figure out how to win attacking. Ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da. Oh, I'm not close enough, am I? Yes, Toby Fox triple, triple shortcutted a joke, which was really funny and clever. Okay, hold on. There we go. Look at that. 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 I'm sorry. It's very cute. They are very cute. Hold on. I did it wrong. I'm, I'm not doing it very well, but they're very cute. Oh, I love that infinite snowman. I love being able to talk to them. Even if you have like a talk option on the menu, <clears throat> like Fantasy Star 4. Oh my god, nose nuzzle champions. Stolen light. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I was thinking about doing a closet cosplay because <clears throat> I wore my Zagreus costume for Hades this year, or this week year week this week because it was Halloween week and it turned out to be a good week for it <clears throat> but I don't have anything effective so instead I'm wearing stripes so you know I'm a child at heart this is the only stripes I own and I put the blue and the pink in my eyeshadow but I don't know if it stayed so I don't know if you can see it but I tried posture check all right everybody sit up straight and tall so Susie and Birdly went to go fight the queen, or deal with the queen, or rescue Noelle. A book hole, yes, that's correct. Oh man, I've heard about bug fables. Preventing backtracking? Secret passageway construction. Are those also gonna be, oh my god. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, oh my god, is there still gonna be, like, something related to Spamton or Mike or whatever that is? Oh my god. I'm really not okay with the acid, just, just a thought. Just a thing. I might want to reload? Why? Why would I want to reload? S did I not want to progress? There's a way I didn't go? Oh! Yeah, I forgot which direction was which. Okay. I do like to explore. Look at that, you can quit. Amazing. Okay, let's try this again. Folks. Oh, I can't just go back? All right. <laughs> Sorry, folks. The queen just wants to explode for you one more time. All right. And that's true, we did just lose that time. Time traveling. We're gonna have to add an hour or whatever <laughs> to my play time. Maybe I'll just leave it sitting for an hour, just to make sure. 
All right, so this looks like ribbons or DNA. No, no, I know what that is. That is a that is a that is a dark fountain. That is a dark fountain. That's a dark fountain, but it's light. I really, really love. Look at the lighting effect here. Look at the beauty and effectiveness of how the lights work on like the shadows, like the little bright, bright spots, just a little bit of the bright, bright spots. It's so much more detailed than anything else I've seen quite like this. Like it, oh my God, like nobody does this. Yet. Like just like the little tiny bit of highlight, it makes the dark, it makes it look real. It makes it look more real. It's gorgeous. Hello friend. Oh, well, well, okay, fine, take all of my speculation from earlier and just like, give me something, then provided that this is a believable source of information, the knight created the fountain and the world. It, for now. I'm sorry, I can't get over the lighting. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you, Mika. Yes, yes. The night creates the fountain by its own hand. I want to watch that. Serious lore dropping. Gotta put a little bit of silliness in there. You gotta do it. You're Toby Fox. That's what you do. Stage dinner entertainment. The birth of a fountain. Elegantly quixotic. I'm often forced to star in those. Oh, the home videos. Oh no. Let me show me show me the whole thing from the beginning. Pillar of smoke, so much smoke, it's hard to tell who it is. Thanks, Toby Fox. <sighs> so somebody used it to talk about the night. God, I'm sorry, I'm just admiring the graphics here. Hi, real foxy Minecraft gamer. Welcome, welcome, yes. I'm sorry, I'm just like, just like look at, look at, look at the incredible graphics. Like, I'm sorry, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, the knight, it, they, who knows what pronoun to use. I think it is the one that we've gotten though. Um, um, so the knight created the fountains. Can somebody get me the text of Ralsei's legend? No commentary, just the text itself. Yeah, no, Toby Fox definitely got help from here on out. He's got help with the graphics and he's got help with the building of it, if I remember correctly. Which is super cool. <clears throat> Actually, make sure we don't... Okay, thank you. Okay, Justin's got it. So nobody else copy-paste it. Okay. Once upon a time, a legend was whispered among shadows. It was a legend of hope, a legend of dreams, a legend of light, a legend of dark. This is the legend of Delta Rune. For millennia, hold on, just a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up this chat thingy so I can scroll up and see. For millennia, light and dark have lived in balance, bringing peace to the world. But if this harmony were to shatter, a terrible calamity would occur. The sky will run black with terror, and the land will crack with fear. Then, her heart pounding, the earth will draw her final breath. Only then, shining with hope, three heroes appeared at world's end. Edge, a human, a monster, and a prince from the dark. 
Only they can seal the fountains and banish the angels heaven. Only then will balance be restored and the world saved from destruction. Stay the fountain of darkness. The geyser that gives this land form stands tall at the center of the kingdom. But recently, another fountain has appeared on the horizon and with it the balance of light and dark begins to shift. Okay. You didn't think we were actually going to progress the game, did you? All right. So obviously a few things stand out here. So the, the, the implication here is that the balance wasn't a problem when there was only one dark fountain. The one dark fountain being a, being a, being Ralsei's fountain in the town. Um, <laughs> Frost Noble, that's not inaccurate. Somebody should put that in Flutie Vaughn and make sure you give Frost Noble credit, credit for it. For anyone who can't read it in chat, Lauren's streams are 80% talking about random things, 15% actually playing the game, and 5% rehydrating. That's some correct math. Um, thank you, Chrono. Okay, I'll hydrate. Um, no, so, according to Ralsei's legend, the three, and only the three, presumably, of us are going to save the world. Oh my god, no, I can't drink that much. There's a whole bunch of people hydrate bombing me. Um, no, so, so, there's a balance of light and dark. The fountain, the dark fountain. Oh my god. There, you can't, you can't see this, YouTube, but I'm seeing, like, Redeemed hydrate, redeemed hydrate, redeemed hydrate, redeemed hydrate. After the heroes will appear after Earth draws its final breath. Okay, hold on. La 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 la. Okay, Kronos says that he that he uh sent me this. All right, I'm gonna pull this up on my phone. I could put a limit on the number of hydrates at at one time at least. All right. Chrono sent me the thing. La, 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 la. Once upon a time, a legend was whispered among shadows. It was a legend of hope. It was a legend of dreams. It was a legend of light. It was a legend of dark. So hope and light are not in parentheses. Dreams and dark are, are, are. Legend of Deltarune. Light and dark have lived in balance, bringing peace in the world. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Um... The sky will run black with terror, the land will crack with fear, the earth will draw her final breath. I feel like there's something, and again, I haven't played this run, but I feel like there's something with similar phrasing in the No Mercy run. Um, Heroes will appear at world's end. Only they can seal the fountains and banish the angels heaven. Balance will be restored and the world saved from destruction. <clears throat> oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Somebody has, has explained why it's in parentheses. Thank you, Chrono. No, that's fine. That's fine. I get it now. Um, also, no, I can't resist my Avatar the Last Airbender thing. Um, no, but specifically, then her heart pounding, the earth will draw her final breath. I feel like there's something about that. But I, I don't know. I feel like there was something about... I don't know. I don't know. Um... Yeah, pixel shtick. That's what I'm... Because, like, again, like, I've heard people talk about... I haven't played it, so it doesn't stick in my head. But I feel like there's a line that sounds similar to that. About the world, about the Earth. <clears throat> Chrono, you typed the thing up for me. And then somebody explains to me how it went. Um, yeah, so Gerson says something about the angel from above comes and, and the world will go empty. Um, yeah, but I, I was misunderstanding something, so no, it's fine. Um, and in that case, the angel is Frisk. Or Frisk possessed by Kara. Um, or however we choose to read that. 
And so the underground going empty is either because you let them out or you killed them all. Yeah, so Legend of Hopes and Dreams. Yeah. <clears throat> so this being a Legend of Hope and Dreams, and the fact that sort of an, an Azrael lookalike is the one who tells it to us, like... La 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 is like significant potentially because I think that like I said I think you know what I hope he doesn't do but I hope he doesn't do I hope that it, it isn't that Rawl say wants to set up something something good or his or confront his own loneliness or something like that so he so he he engineers this legend this situation um to come true knowing that the heroes will be victorious ultimately um but for whatever reason he's the one making all of this happen that he controls the night he definitely knows more than what he lets on. And that's what I'm saying, like, I don't think he's evil, but the, there are ways to attribute that to him in a way that's not evil, at least in intent, whether the action of causing a lot of harm is evil or not. Um, but also, I feel as though this game is connected to Undertale in very, very... I think that there's a direct connection between this game and Undertale, and I don't know exactly what it is. Um, I do remember... Oh, here's here's a simple question. Here's a very very simple question that you can actually answer chat Are you on the edge of your seat ready to type? So in Undertale Whenever the gameplay changes Your heart changes color There's a section in Undertale. I think there's sections that are more 2D. Because, right? Aren't there, isn't there like a section that's a 2D moving like that sort of thing? Because I feel like there's an, there's, 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 there's a, so, I feel like there's a section there that is similar, similar to what I did Okay, no, not the jumping papyrus one because you, now you're blue. I remember now you're blue. Yeah. So with Metaton, this it's the shooting. It's the shooting. That's the thing. I knew there was. So, they knew there was a gameplay thing that was that was similar. Okay, so it's shooting. It's not. It's not. It's not this way. It's this way. You're going this way. But you shoot. You 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 shoot. You shoot the little yellow bullets. What color? Are, are you yellow there? Because you're yellow when you fight Spamton. Are you yellow when you do that? What color? What color are you when you fire bullets? You are yellow when you fire bullets in Undertale. Okay. But you're, you are going this way, right? Or, or this way? I think you're going this way. I don't think you're going sideways. Because I remember sideways is Papyrus. Yeah, no, so I know all the stuff about like the hearts and the significance of that. I'm not... This is why I ask very specific questions because um, because I I mean in this case it's Undertale stuff so I know it but so the question is what like there is a thing that is like that that has a gameplay mechanism that's similar right what color are you then and the answer is yes yes you are yellow I'm not I'm not asking what any of them stand for or anything like that I'm specifically asking the color of it and we've got an answer so it's a vertical shooter rather than horizontal yes okay thank you that's why i was confused because i was like the only 2d section that i remembered offhand also was the papyrus now you're blue but yes so yellow yes curious also can we just circle back to a moment for a moment to chris's reaction after fighting spamton I'm sorry, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to work through several things at the same time, okay? And I don't have the pieces. I don't have the pieces I need to do anything, I think, with the knight. I don't think I have the pieces to do anything with the fountain. 
Although I'm curious if there's a balance between light and dark, but there's only one fountain and that counts as balanced according to the legend. And now there's these other fountains. Somebody is showing up and putting these fountains in there and, and in so doing is creating the version of the dark world that we encounter in each chapter, which has in it a corrupted or evil version of one of the leaders or rulers of that world who was not always evil like that. Um, <clears throat> and additionally, they're also so far from what we have seen in each dark world, there is an optional enemy who is of that world in some definite measurable way but who somehow winds up with some phenomenal power or trying to get some phenomenal power i don't know what gerbil says when you defeat gerbil i don't even remember all of what gerbil says when you fight him or go in to talk to him go in to fight him i will be paying more attention next time around um but uh but we get, we get more from Spamton, and also I did the entire thing of Spamton. So... There's someone on the outside who is speaking to them on the phone, which you normally can't do. Or who was speaking to Spamton on the phone. And, uh... And, like, um... And so, uh, so, like... These are things that are the same that happen every every time. We've only had it happen twice. Presumably there will be more Dark Worlds that will again be tied into Chris's everyday life in some way. Um, but uh, but so like, I kind of wonder like, you know, the, the, the concrete information that we have from Spamton is he wants to, he wants to go to heaven, to, 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 to stand so tall he can see heaven. Um, which is not clear whether that refers to the light world, um, which it seems like it might, or something else, because the angel's heaven is a thing that is mentioned in the legend. And also, if I remember correctly, in the light world, there is some talk about that at or related to the church. Um, so those things may be directly connected, um, <clears throat> and that may in some way connect it to the legend in Undertale itself, we don't know. Um, but it seems as though someone or something in the light world, because we know that light world, that lightners have connected with dark, with darkners in the past. That's why the, that's why the king goes, like gets corrupted and angry because, because his friend never came back for him. Um, and, and like, Metaton may or may not have actually come here. May, Metaton may have just been sitting at the computer lab because it, if, if that is correct, where Metaton was just sitting at a computer drawing a picture of his robot self that he wished he could be, um, like like many trans people um, trying to, to imagine what his, what his self would be if he could be the self that he wants to be, um, I think that that is a, a beautiful, if sad, a beautiful and relatable um, bit of his story there that I think will probably resonate with a lot of people from what I've heard. Um, but if it is true that he was just sitting in the real world, the real computer lab in the light world, drawing a picture and Swatch was helping him with that as the as the art program or whatever, like then that indicates that there is a connection where lightners and darkners can interact without the lightner necessarily needing to go into the dark world. So then I kind of wonder, actually, now that I think about it, what if the king's exposure to his lightener that he was so attached to actually wasn't in the dark world what if he's a forsaken stuffed animal or something like that you know what if he's like i mean maybe not a stuffed animal maybe he's a playing card but like what if there was a a lightener in the light world who played with him not in the dark world i don't know that he directly contradicts that but that does kind of seem to be the implication between Metaton and Swatch. Um, and then the thing that Metaton creates, this body that he designs, um, then exists in the Dark World enough that somebody in the Dark World can actually, uh, like, can actually interact with because it has reality in the Dark World. And, is, and the Dark World is where our dreams live. You know? Hope and dreams. If it's hope 
in the light side and dreams in the dark side. The things that we dream could be true. Like, and like Birdly wants to be a hero. He comes here, he tries to be a hero. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, so I hope you don't mind. Is this all right, folks? I know this isn't like the game game, but this stuff is interesting to me. And I really like to try to piece it together. It's actually really exciting hitting a milestone in the story of Hades and being like, oh, wow, actually some of my like crazy theorizing stuff, there was something there. I wasn't sure what the specifics were, but I identified like the secret and had some guesses that were correct. And that was really exciting. Um, <laughs> well, good. Thank you all so much. Um, no, I'm seriously, I'm thinking about like, because we don't know exactly what the relationship there is. Um, but I do wonder, I do wonder like, who's mucking things up? <laughs> Fair stolen light. <laughs> like somebody is going around mucking things up. The knight who the pronouns we've had for the night are it. It is opening up the fountains which are corrupting the dark world. But the world above doesn't seem to be threatened by this. Per se. Um. That we've seen. I don't know, like there's things that I want to know. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, like I want to like go back and like look at some of what the king says and see if I can piece any more stuff together because my memory is so bad and it's been apparently like over a month <laughs> since I started the game because I'm really slow. Um, uh, cup rock backseating means telling me how to play the game, giving me gameplay suggestions, hints, or instructions that I don't specifically ask for. La la. Oh, is the king not a uh, he, him? I thought that they'd use he, him to refer to the king. My apologies if I did that wrong. Oh, okay, no, we're talking about the Chris. Uh, Chris, okay. Yeah. Um, so like, okay, thank you. The Chris, the Chris is they, them. Yes. Yeah, so, so tangents. Chris, such an interesting component of these games is the relationship between Chris, well, between the player and the player character. Um, and so in this game, specifically, the relationship between the player and Chris is really, really, really interesting. Really, 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 really interesting. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, the Chris. I think, I, I feel like Chris would appreciate being known as, here comes the Chris. And Chris is like, yeah, that's right. I'm cool. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Ararian. Um, <clears throat> so like... Chris blatantly disobeys us sometimes, but sometimes they, they go along with what we want, even if it's what they don't want, and you can tell that they don't want it. I don't know what Chris thinks of us, but Chris, like, is... So Chris has a really, really, really strong reaction to what goes on with Spamton. When you ask, or when, when somebody, I think Susie is like, Chris, you're clearly not okay. You are shaking. So that's like our hint, which is so interesting because like as a, as a player, a lot of the times when you play a game, and somebody asks you, how are you feeling? And they're asking the character. If the character, like if the character is a character who speaks, the character will say, no, I'm fine. Or no, I'm not fine. And that's like, like if you're playing Final Fantasy VI and somebody is like, Tara, are you okay? And she's like, no, not really. Like you don't think anything of it. There's nothing weird about that. You don't feel strange at all because it's a person that you know. Um... It's different when it's a character who feels more like a player avatar. Um, and so like... We could have the instinctive assumption when we first start playing the game that, uh, 
that Chris is, um... Ba -da 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 -da. So just to be clear, I am not going to look at chat at this point because I suspect that chat is not going to be able to resist talking to me about your theories and your thoughts and you have seen things that I haven't seen and know things that I don't know. So I'm realizing that maybe this is dangerous territory. Um, so like Chris is, um, when you first start playing, if you hadn't played a Toby Fox game before where you know that there is actually a relationship between you and the character where like, it's not just like, like you, the, you, the player have a role in the story, in the experience. There is that meta level. Because we've played that, we know that Deltarune probably will have something like that. Um, but it's still really uncomfortable because Frisk, to my knowledge, never does anything to indicate that they are uncomfortable with what we do. Like, we never see Frisk be unhappy with our presence. Um, as I understand it, I think in the No Mercy run, when I think Frisk turns into Kara and then talks to you, I think... I'm not exactly sure on the specifics. Again, I haven't played this run mostly. It's just like you absorb it by existing in the Undertale fandom. You get bits and pieces. But I think that happens. But it, I don't think that Frisk ever, ever talks to us or looks at us or interacts with us. Um, but C Chris has their own sense of self. And so you have other characters in your party, like Susie being like, yeah, whatever, I'm going to go do my thing. Um, and there's times when Chris does stuff off screen from us like they're doing their own thing and we don't get to hear what they say but people respond as though they speak which indicates that they are saying it and we don't get to hear it and we don't control them for that um they take the heart out at the end of chapter one and they throw it in a birdcage and you think that they're going to go do something evil which what they do is they eat a pie which is not evil um but I think that there's definitely, like, tension between you and Chris. And I've, I've talked before about thinking maybe they might do, like, a, a never-ending story type thing, but, but who is it that has connected us to Chris? And why have they connected us to Chris? Because we have been, within the context of the Deltarune universe, I think we, the player, outside, in perhaps one might say, heaven, outside of the light world, have been pulled in. So perhaps... That's why the angel of heaven is either Frisk or Carrot. No, it's not. It's you. It's, it's you, the player, the angel of heaven. It is because of your actions, your actions, that the underworld is emptied, for better or for worse. So if we can take that interpretation and carry it through into Deltarune, then we are the angels, the angel in the angel's heaven in the real world. And perhaps the characters in the story in the story want to break out of all of the stories and be their own people, not controlled by anyone not controlled by the darkness not controlled by the light oh, well they are i guess the darkness not controlled by the lightners and not controlled by me you us in the outside world um you'll notice or, or you may you may you may or may not know um but there were clear instructions so so fan gamer and yes i'm gonna pull in some real world lore I'm going all the way meta, and I've talked about this before, but I'm going to mention it again, because again, this is Toby Fox we're talking about, and I think he's going to do this. Fan Gamer, they're close personal friends of Toby Fox. They're all from the starmen.net forums. Um, Fan Gamer has a strict request from Toby Fox not to create merchandise with Light World characters. That means something, friends. I don't, I, I think that means something on a meta perspective, from a, from a meta perspective about the story itself. I think that that's significant in some way. And I think that that, that like confirms what I, what I, that, that there's some validity to what is the, what is the role that we as players play in the world of Deltarune? And how does our world 
relate to the world of Deltarune? And is our having played Undertale in some way responsible for the way things turned out in Deltarune? I wonder... I wonder... I have no idea. I mean, I probably have ideas, but I don't really know. So, I think that that's... I think that's... I think that's awesome. Because, like... Like... Like I said, like, Toby Fox is friends with Fangamer. They, they like, work together on stuff. Like, they're pals. Um, and he's been very clear about he only want the only official merch comes from them. Because he wants to help his friends out and support his friends. Um, which I think is awesome and really cool. And, you know, maybe we all, if we become successful, find ways to lift up the people that we love with our success and take them up with us. Um... But I, I think that there's something signif significant story related about that. <sighs> like I'm 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 fairly sure that that's actually story driven. I'm fairly sure that that's related to lore in some capacity, and not any other kind of decision. And that's really interesting to me. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, I don't know because that would be that the. Like, is, is Undertale a story in Deltarune, actually? Is that another level removed from reality? Like, are technically the Lightners in part of our world or not part of I don't know. I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a tangent thing. But yeah, so Chris responds really strongly to what happens to Spamton. And as far as we know, like, none of Spamton's... Like, Spamton doesn't have any, like, emotional value to Chris himself. You know, like, he himself is not, like... Like, Chris doesn't, like, befriend Spamton that we know of. So, Chris's strong reaction... Like, it could be the, the pressure, for example, of Spamton being like, I can't do this, but you can. Um, it may be that Chris doesn't want that kind of responsibility. Um... Or it could have something to do with, I mean, Spamton has it in his head that he's going to become all powerful. He's going to be free. We're going to be free. You're going to be free. The Undertale section, Undertale. freedom in that case is going from the underworld to the surface, going from one area to another. So perhaps freedom is like escaping the constraints of the dark world. Um, so I'm trying to think through all of that stuff here. And part of it is my memory isn't great. Um, but Spamton doesn't realize he's got his strings, and it's the strings that we're breaking. In order to overcome that fight, you break the strings that are holding him up. And like, so that kind of implies that it's through, it's because of the strings that he fights you. And the body is connected with those strings, with those wires, when you first see it. And then again, before he fades, when he's in that other, that other chamber. Um, like, who or what is pulling, like, literally pulling those strings? And are they pulling strings on Gerbil? Does Gerbil have some equivalent of strings or wires? Um, because there's other creatures in the Dark World, in, in the Cyber World, who have strings that the Queen is controlling. But I feel like the Queen isn't controlling Spamton. And then there's the whole telephone thing. Especially the point where Spamton gets the call that's for him, and it attacks him instead of you. What is going on there? Who or what is calling him in that case? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So there's a lot going on, and, and, and like, there are sad, like, there aren't really, like, sad, like, tragic fights that we've had so far otherwise. Um... But, like, Chris responding that strongly specifically to Spamton kind of makes me wonder if 
Chris relates to the idea of having strings, having a chain pulling on you because doesn't Spamton say something about the chain? You're 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 nothing but a heart on a chain. I think is what I think is is what what he says something like that. You're a heart that's being pulled around on a chain. Bum, ba -da -da -da. And if that kind of thing really is, gets to Chris. But you're on a string the whole time, Spamton. Even when you're trying to offer freedom to Chris, you don't have the freedom. And then of course one wonders like, what does the freedom mean to Chris outside of our involvement? I don't know. I don't know. So it's interesting. It's interesting. And I don't have the answers to any of these questions, but, but I'm, I'm laying them down on the table in front of you. And now I'm gonna keep playing the game, I think. So big mysteries here. Who's pulling the strings? Who's the knight? How do the light world and dark world connect? Are we the angel? Is our world heaven? What does any of this mean? Oh my god. Thank you, Toby Fox. <sighs> Can we like flush the toilet? It's wedged. Amazing. Is it gonna come out and use the, uh, use the hardest spell in the game on us? Details, amazing. <sighs> if you haven't played Earthbound, you see. In Earthbound, if you hit the interact button, and there is not a thing to interact with, it tells you no problem here. I actually have Lauren the Flute shirts that I printed years ago that have no problem here written just like this in the Earthbound font on them. <sighs> I don't know if I actually, I might have some of those left at my mom's house. My ill-fated efforts to make merch. Oh my God, Captain Cream Puff. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy Earthbound. It has a lot to love. Yes, Nick Buntline has uh, an Ampy got those back in the day. It's been a while. Oh my god. Well, this is the perfect moment for no problem here. Thank you, Toby Fox. It's amazing. Everything about this is amazing. Um, hello? Oh my god. That's amazing. Everything about this is amazing. Preventing backtracking. Secret passageway construction. Alright. Now we're gonna progress the story. I've talked about stuff. And now we're gonna go. The real reason I needed to restart indeed. Alright. I was like, what is this glowy stuff? But fortunately for me, Ralse is more uh, able to decipher what is happening in the world around him than I am. The free pool. Oh my god, the queen is just absolutely ridiculous. It's interesting she's a Mac and then she's got this like Windows background. It does kind of look like Mountain Dew, doesn't it? Love it like family. Um, no, I won't. Uh. We've never gotten an answer, by the way, as to why Spamton, that voice inside of Spamton references being in a pool of battery acid, just, just 
for the record, I don't think we ever got an explanation or an answer for either who is Mike or what is who or what or how is in battery acid when you are talking to Spamton and he's in his shop, I think. All right, hydration. To be fair, I've talked a lot, so I'll drink that. He did used to live in the Queen's Mansion, that's true. <laughs> My mansion's energy, energy source and fun to drink. I don't know about that. And then she just says bye. Uh, uh, She's really excited. Maybe if we just like press the button, it goes away. And then, then you notice they like, they turn and they look at you like, well, what are we going to do? Ah, uh, 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 well, okay, we're going to take a swan boat with a creepy no eye. Something's going to go in that eye. Swan boat things are romantic, because we're also going to get all... This needs to be an acapella track. It's gonna be the bird that carries you across an impossibly large gap. Disproportionately, sorry. I figured you'd know what I meant even if I couldn't remember the exact words. This needs to be an acapella track. That, that, that sound font sounds like something from Mother 3. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It turned blue. Oh my god. Gotta turn all of the houses blue. I don't know why. But we're gonna do this. That's a good question. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, look at look at Rolse's face there. Shrink from the acid. Um that's concerning. Oh look, there's a castle! I wanna turn the castle. No 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 castle, castle, castle! No! I didn't get to turn the castle blue. I want to turn the castle blue. Oh, look, there's like another town. I had banana pancakes for breakfast. Which, if you've watched me play under not Undertale, Earthbound, you know pancakes are my favorite food, but I had banana. Banana pancakes in honor of the queen. So I got my potassium. I don't know where the banana is, it's invisible anyway. Yes. Oh no, you can't do this to me, Queen. No, 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 no. No, we missed it! We missed it! We missed it! I did it wrong! I did it wrong! I did it wrong! I did it wrong! Oh, tragedy. Tragedy. I'm sad. I'm sad. This looks just like... the... Oh my god. The, the layout of this 
structurally is um, the shortcut in Undertale. I feel that's what it looks like. We need a hand eraser. To be pet by something like that. Oh my god, Ral say. Ral say. Ral say. Yes, the river person, that's it. Oh my god, Ral say. A certain bird is having a ride on the acid river. A certain bird. I'm a little nervous about the fact that there's battery acid everywhere. I feel as though I should be as concerned about the battery acid as I am about lava. But we gotta take inventory of what's going on. Okay, so there's nothing here. If I were truly curious, I would be like, I wonder what happens if I walk off the edge. But I don't know if I'm... Okay, 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 we're safe. All right. This looks like there should be a door here. Ah. Goodness. Let's go make the friend. We're gonna go make the friend. Hi, friend. These wires don't look anything like the wires that were on Spamton, so I don't think the queen was pulling his strings, which I kind of figured. Are we gonna shrink, I wonder, and have like a little bitty version? I'll say charmed the wire. Let's see if I can remember how to play this game. Oops. I gotta actually try to think about this as a thing I can do. I think this will work. Okay. If I'm going to be able to beat Gerbil, I better be able to learn regular gameplay mechanics. All right. Oh my God, oh my God, Chris is doing the dance. Chris is doing the dance, folks. Chris is doing the dance. That's amazing. That's amazing. Peace has returned to the castle. Oh, I didn't see what the castle said. I guess you can't f talk to the castle without. Re revive dust. Does that only work on certain characters? All fallen party members. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay, he does run to safety there. Okay. Sorry. I want to go up there actually. There 
There we go. Problem solving, Lauren. Oh, this looks like where I'm supposed to go. Darn it. No! 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 No. Although that actually looks like where I'm supposed to go. I'm indecisive, folks. I don't know what to do here. No! Oh my god. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know! The other one's harder to get, so maybe it's actually the one you're supposed to get. Maybe. Crossing. Especially handpicked. Oh shoot. Oh, this looks like this is optional. There's houses and treasure chests. Ah, you didn't get any. fully understand how this works, but I bet it's going to take my one dollar. Tony. I bet. I want them to go into the house. I did it. I did it. What does this say? Oh. This looks like where I'm supposed to go. I don't want to do what I'm supposed to do yet. sinking into the battery acid. I don't like that. Why are you sinking into the battery acid? Hello? <laughs> Little house cleaning. See, because he's cleaning the house. Oh my god. Amazing. <sighs> I really wonder what a... what... what pun they were able to do in any other languages. Let's see, that's very funny. attack mode mad that was amazing that was fantastic I approve I approve that was really cute and silly I was like oh am I gonna have to fight my new friend and then he was like no no you're not yeah no that was great also whatever it was that was sinking into the sinking into the swamp. Not swamp, battery acid. Battery acid and swamp are not the same thing. Just, 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 just stating for the record. Oh, 
not treasure chest move locations? Didn't it used to be like up instead of beside? I'm sorry, folks. La, 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 la. I swear to God, it was in a different location. But it's not saying anything. How disappointing. Look. I saw it. And I will draw some satisfaction out of the fact that I saw it. Even if it means nothing. We noticed, folks. We noticed. Go us. The way that this ends is very much like the end of the Sunflowers song in Mother 3. Alright, I guess we better do something about this. Hello, Hand. How are you, Hand? I really want to have a clever hand-related pun that I can say here, but I can't think of anything, so we're just gonna, like, high-five that hand. You ready? You ready? I'm ready to high five the hand. Oh my god, Noel Girl and Samovar. Oh my god. You too. It didn't high five me, it high fived itself. Yeah, just leave me hanging like that, Toby Fox. <sighs> Little cry. <laughs> you can't undo a high five, but I want the high five too. <sighs> Will no one think of the Lawrence? Oh, look at that. A little shortcut back. Ah. waiting for the eye to get possessed and creepy. What if we're gonna have to fight the duck? Swan. Don't fight swans. They're like geese. Don't. Oh, look at this ominous shadow. This wouldn't possibly be ominous in any way. Uh, this looks like serious talk. What is it, Ralsei? I don't know what you want, Chris. I want I want Chris to be able to choose for themselves. I actually really like games where the main character gets to make decisions for themselves and speak for themselves and have their own personality. And I actually am deeply uncomfortable. I don't I don't know, Chris. What do you feel, Chris? What do you feel, Chris? What do you feel, Chris? What do you feel? Like I don't know. I mean, I guess Chris likes being around their friends, so that doesn't necessarily mean... Oh my god. What a cute goat boy. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I don't feel at all bad about trying to set Noelle and Susie up, but I feel bad trying to set Chris up with anyone. Because, like, when it comes to Noelle and Susie, I'm a meddling friend getting in the way and being obnoxious. When it comes to Chris, I don't actually want to force their hand. So for me, like, I'm like, well, this could be like a friend thing. They like being around their friends. Yes, Ralsei does look like their brother, so I'm not trying to make this like, I don't know. Set everybody up with Susie. Susie needs some therapy first 
before she can date anyone. But yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, Ralph, say I know. Uh, uh, How do I even be a friend? Ralph say asking himself these questions that a lot of us perhaps have asked at various points in our life. How do you befriend somebody? How do you talk to people? How do you do this stuff? Like, spoiler, that's a thing you can work on. That's a thing you can learn. Yeah, Blue Glass, I don't know that I feel that it's necessarily romantic either, but, um, but yeah, like you can, uh, you can, you can learn to talk to people and you can learn to make friends and you can learn things even if it doesn't come naturally to you. You may not ever be like the 100% comfortable social butterfly, but you can be whatever the friendliest, easiest talking to people version of yourself can is. You can be that. Uh, uh, That's what I thought. Huh, being nice is actually pretty good. It's a pretty good, pretty good start. Uh, Genuine though. Uh, like genuinely complimenting somebody, genuinely having an interest in what they're talking about. Don't just say a thing that's nice for the sake of saying a thing that's nice, but try to find something real that you can say and compliment them on or, or that's positive. Uh, uh, being friends is more than just being nice to people. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's true. Susie's not always nice. Susie could maybe stand to be a little nicer to her friends still. There's still some working to do. Yeah. Like, so even if people have something about the wiring of their brains or the way they were raised or some combination thereof where it doesn't come naturally to you, you know, you can still learn to do quite well with people. Um, it may be harder, but it's the same as any other thing in life, including Lauren and spatial reasoning and bullet hells and stuff. So there you go. You can practice talking to people if this is something that you struggle with. And I can practice bullet hells, which is something I struggle with. Um, well, so like naturally speaking, I, I talk very easily to people, but then I developed massive social anxiety at some point around age 12 or 13 or so. And at some point I lost my ability to just talk to people because I get so in my own head about it. Um, but I'm still super extroverted. I like talking to people. I get energy from talking to people. Like my my need to talk to people is very high. And my easily overwhelmed by talking to people is not really a thing. So I want to be able to shut off the part of my brain that makes me doubt myself and get self-conscious, which I think is going to come with learning to be okay with the fact that not pe that people aren't going to like me. Learning that that rather than trying to do it right to S rank making new friends, um, just unabashedly be myself. And the people who are going to like me are going to like me. And the people who aren't going to like me aren't going to like me, but I'll become more comfortable and happier just being me and connecting with the people who like that. My mom has no self-consciousness at all. Um, and so she's very much like me and what I would be like if I could be like that. Um, well, so the thing with extroversion and introversion is it's not, do you like talking to people? It's not, can you talk to people? It's like, do you refill your meter by being around other people or by being alone? And in my case, I refill my meter by being around other people. So, yeah. It's, it's not, are you good at talking to people? It's, it's, it, that's, that's what it's got to do with. Um, and I know like this is like, there's like kind of like the common usage definition of introversion and extroversion, which is like talks to people, doesn't talk to people. Um, but, uh, but it does like, everybody does have kind of like their, their very specific needs as far as being around people and, and having alone time. And I personally find people talking about extroversion and introversion a lot of times to be really uncomfortable because a lot of times it feels like it's introverts talking about how extroverts don't have deep thoughts or form real connections with people. But I'm just like, are you for real? Come on. Let's not put ourselves on a pedestal and put other people down. Like, let's just try to have something that's actually genuine and helpful. So, 
Yeah. I don't know. For me, if I'm having a hard time, the best thing to do is to be around other people. So, yeah. But regardless of whether you're introverted or extroverted, if you want to talk to people and you have a hard time with it, you can get better. I actually lead workshops on this called Overcoming Shyness and Making Friends at MAGFest and other conventions. In fact, there's a version of that that's up on my YouTube channel. If you want to see the first time I ever presented it, I was dressed as Toriel. So shockingly. Um, but yeah. I like the amount of, because other people are helping with the graphics, it means that they can do more portraits. Um, and, uh, and so like the little, like the little, like, ooh, face that our Rolse is making here. She's rude, she's sarcastic, she's mean, but we love her. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Samovar, because he doesn't have to do all of the other art, he can put more time into making more portraits. Like, you're able to focus more on things and get more done when you don't have to do everything. And so I think that's awesome. There's an existential crisis in this statement right here. There's an existential crisis here. I'm sorry, Chris. I don't want to do this to you, Chris. I really don't. I want you to tell me what you want. Although I will say if Chris started hurting the characters that I've started to like, I think I would I think I would intervene and then we would have a problem on our hands. That would be interesting if you had to fight the character to keep them from hurting other people. I know, yet you keep playing. Like it is it is kind of like the like commentary on like we'll just don't do that, you know? It is really very, very interesting, this line. Uh -huh. The dot 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 because of course that line is intentional the discomfort that we're supposed to feel the uh, the the irony in that line is of course very intentional is it is it what does that mean we'll say what does that mean yeah i don't know if we say knows that somebody from an all an outer world is following along you know yeah and smacky and that's what i mean like you could just stop playing like the fact that you that like flowey says please don't play this save again please don't reset things for your own entertainment let them be happy let this be their happy ending like yeah yeah i know everything here is very uncomfortable and I don't know if Ralsei knows that we're here or not. But one could take a never ending story interpretation of everything here. And be like, this is all a journey to get us into the game. Uh, uh, That's right, isn't it? That's a good question. Uh, uh, is it, is it, is it Chris like? This will really hurt Chris. This will really hurt Chris, all of this. Because I think that Chris is not happy for us to be sharing Chris's body. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting stuff. Right, but Chris didn't make that choice. Chris didn't choose that dialogue. We did. Uh, uh. What's up, Ralsei? Uh, uh. He's having existential questions. Chris also, I think, is dealing with that differently. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, poor Ralsei. <sighs> so there's this whole question of who are you really? What are you really like? What does it mean to be you? And if you are trying to be what you think will make other people like you, is that you? 
Is that you at all? And if they like the version of you that you've constructed for them, does that mean that they don't that they don't actually like you because they don't actually know you? Do you have something underneath that? Are you nothing but the masks that you wear to try to make other people happy? Questions. <laughs> Questions. Questions with personal significance. I can say that asking questions about your sense of self and finding your sense of self is a hard journey. And I know I've talked about it extensively on my Delta Rune streams, um, because that's kind of been like the all consuming quest of the past several years of my life. Um, I think I'm older than a fair number of you. Um, and I know that it can feel, especially um, if you've been in situations or have a brain tendency towards not having answers to that questions of who I am. Um, I feel like I can tell you as somebody who's a bit older or a lot older than you, who's worked really hard on this, um, that you can actually get answers to those questions. I suspect that the answers will change over time. You know, like I feel as though I have arrived at an understanding of myself now that I've never had before. And that is true. But that doesn't mean that the uh, the answer that I have to the question of who I am right now is the answer to this question of who I am that I'll have in 20 years. Um, and that's all right. You know, maybe we still have to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. I think it's important in that case to be like, OK, I have changed. Um, but it has been a very interesting journey for me to ask myself, like, what of this cobbled together presentation of who I am is true and what is not. And uh, there are a lot of ways to kind of get at that answer, but I think that's very, 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 very important. I don't know. That's probably been the, the single most stabilizing thing in my entire life that I've ever done for myself has been putting in a lot of work to figure out who and what I am. And I don't have all the answers. There's a few important pieces that I'm still working through right now. Um, but having even some of those things that you can hold on to and say, I am a person who does this, is like this, feels this way, likes this, likes that, doesn't like this, doesn't like that. All of the, all of that information is so, so important. I think, I think most teenagers have less of that than adults. Um, I think I had, I've had less of that my whole life than most people, but I think most people do struggle with it to some degree. Um, so I think, uh, I think that, I don't know if these are things that you're struggling with, like, first of all, you're not the only person struggling with them. So that doesn't mean there's something wrong with you that you're struggling with it. Even if you are all the way unsure about yourself the way I was for so much of my life. Um, that's okay. There are actually other people who struggle with it even to that degree and it can be worked on. Um, so keep at it. It's worth doing. It's hard work. My goodness, is it hard work, but it's really good. So just do your best to try to figure out what you can. Yeah, no, Drew, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I've had that sort of thing. Even my speech patterns will change based on who I'm talking to, um, which to a certain degree we all do. We all kind of mirror that what's around us a little bit. Um, but there's like a little bit and then there's a lot. Um, but yeah, like don't second guess everything about yourself necessarily, but but do like give yourself a chance to be like, what do I think about this? What do I feel about this? And and and, and does this line up with kind of what I understand about myself? Um, and, and, and you can also be like, oh, I thought that fit, but it doesn't fit. That's okay, too. You can change. You can change your mind and you can change as a person. Um, so, yeah, I think. I think. Like, long story short. What does it mean to be raw, say? Like, what does it mean to be any of us? There are some answers out there. 
So yeah, I think, I think that if you, if you consciously work on it, yeah, I think you can, you can find answers to those questions and I think you'll be happier and stabler and better off for it. And I sincerely hope that for all of you who are on this journey, that you, that you find answers to those questions. Um, and I will say, even if you find an answer to that question and it's not the answer you wish it was, if there's something about yourself that isn't something you love, don't be like, oh, I'm a bad person. Oh, I'm a failure. Oh, this is terrible. Be like, oh, this is one of my character flaws. Because we all have character flaws. So you identify your character flaws, which can make people interesting. But also you can be like, what can I do to work around or mitigate this character flaw? Because you can like, you can change things a little bit. Just don't get mad at yourself for having character flaws. That just means you're human, which is awesome. And if you know it and can kind of work around it, if it's something that you that you don't want to control you, like that's awesome to identify that part of yourself, not hate yourself for it, and then try to make it better. Hating yourself for it isn't going to make it better. You like again, you can't hate yourself into being somebody you would love. But yeah, no, he was he was asking rhetorically. At this point, he's at this point, Ralsei is nervous rambling because Chris isn't responding. And so he's just kind of like, he didn't get the answer he expected or wanted. And he's super self-conscious and doesn't know what to do or what to say. So this is very, very, like, this is him stumbling around, which is really interesting to see how well written it is as that kind of a scene. He's like, okay, this is awkward. Like, the way that he keeps saying, like, ha ha, ha, everything's fine. Ha ha, let's just, like, yeah, everything's fine. Ooh, ha ha. It's awkward. It's really awkward. It's well-portrayed awkwardness. I just, I couldn't, I don't know. That felt like the right answer. All right, what now? That is a lot of houses. What are we gonna do with these houses? It is possible that Ralsei didn't want to focus on what was going on with Spamton because he didn't know, but I think that he does know something. Anyway, here is everyone's favorite rule cards. Oh my god, Yuri Anger. Yeah, kind of. Oh my god. I was glad when everyone else stopped, stopped talking like that, but Yuri Anger continued. All right. He has a little ship. I love his super dramatic music. It's amazing. Oh my god. I just read the line of dialogue because I was busy listening to the music. I feel like I should share this with my sister who likes pirates, but I don't think she would appreciate it. He has a little R on his hat. Oh my god. He thinks... Uh, rules card, you're just... Oh my god. Thanks, Ralsei. And Toby Fox. That's true, the portrait and the game sprite don't don't fit. You're correct. I didn't notice that. That's amazing. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's true. He should want to help Lancer. Lancer is a precious baby child. Oh my god. This is really cute. And wholesome and embarrassing. Have you loved Ginger? Oh my god. Ginger is good for stomachs. He's 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 offering he's offering daddy daddy techniques like how to be a dad and take care of this precious baby child. Defeast. Defeast. I... 
Okay, well, if anybody is having trouble reading and understanding his lines because of a language difficulty, I can help with that. So let me know. <laughs> because I can definitely understand how his dialogue would be a little overwhelming if, uh, if you're not a native speaker, because it's so, like, it's, it's butchered. It's very butchered. Left hand man should be right hand man. Ultimate minion. Okay. Yeah, it's like sort of fake old, mo old, old modern English. Like, okay. Behold the form of your destroyer. So he's saying thou, which is an old archaic version of you. Oh, so he's the king's right-hand man, so he can be the queen's left-hand man. Yeah, Samovar, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm clarifying for people who might have a language difficulty there. So. I saw blueprints mentioned. I didn't think, I didn't think when, because this is made by the, by the bot musicians and he, he, they mentioned, they mentioned blueprints, but I was like, they must be new blueprints, it must be different blueprints. Okay, so whatever this thing is, and also it's like, um, um, battle caravan, huh, yes, it's a battle caravan. Do you have an ancient god of combat? Rules card, this is not correct. Rescued it from the king's trash heap. Who put it there? Fixed it in this world scrap shop. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. I remember that. It's a rejected design we made. I, I will choose to believe that Susie suplexed it into the trash, and you can't convince me otherwise. That's true, I could have had a swan versus duck battle. Alas, I let you all down, I'm so sorry. Soon you, sh you will taste rejection. First hand in the form of various bullets. Susieplex, oh my god. Not that I've been thinking about Final Fantasy VI and, and Sab and suplexing a train or anything like that. Certainly not. That would never happen. Thrash Machine reluctantly fights you. I'm sorry, Thrash Machine. These take toilet paper. Um, I'm gonna check him. Okay, that was the Final Fantasy VI opera singing sound font. Amazing. Amazing. I'm delighted. I'm always delighted. But he's not tired, so we're gonna distract. If there's one thing you can count on me for, it's the Final Fantasy VI sound font. Sorry, I'm grooving over here. I know I should be playing a game. Thanks, Toby Fox, you have good taste in video games. It's enough to kind of make me wonder if I should try playing more of the games that are his influences, if I would like them, because his influences that I do know are something that I love so much. Um, but somebody in YouTube comments pointed out that, like, apparently he has also, like, for example, 
book inspirations that are way too dark for Lawrence. So who knows? Oh my god! The hay sounds like something particular. I don't know what it is. Let's distract him. Okay. Many bucks for hire. <laughs> Will appear even if unhired. I even do parties. Amazing. Ah, <sighs> amazing. I like the little like piano, like the tinkly piano notes there. I'm sorry, I'm grooving. Place one less house next turn. What's he doing with the houses? The rules pronounced rules are simple. He's letting us know how to pronounce it. Conquer houses. Whoever has the most wins. doesn't know this is a reference to Sim City. <sighs> I love Sim City very much. Take this tile. Okay. What? Distraction failed? Victory will be mine and Queen will make me her left hand man. Oh my god, he's making so many! What are you doing? What is that even? Where is that coming from? What are those? City is lacking parks if you didn't get that it's Sim City. It's Sim City. I played the original Sim City on the Atari ST. And then I played it on. I did play the Super Nintendo version. Maybe it wasn't the ST. Maybe it was. No, I think it was the ST that I played it on. Bye, Captain Cream from Thank Cream Puff. Thank you for joining us. Oh, oh, it's stats. Oh, you can take multiple houses. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Master card. What happens if we win? Uh oh. Oh my god, it's making stars. Oh, there were stars in the design of it, if I remember correctly. It's so awkward and adorable. I love. Love, 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 love. Love. That it's my ridiculous thrash machine. building up houses. Oh my god, his his saber. At least enemy's ship is very cute. <sighs> That's so cute. That's so cute. How many of these can I make? Okay, I've got enough to do this. Rash off the port bow. <sighs> All right. 
darn it. Smells like a model house set. Amazing. All right. I wonder why his mercy isn't changing. game has been the game is over <laughs> oh man okay it took me a while to figure out actually how the game was supposed to be played because I don't play board games at all so I didn't really realize what our goal was but I think I figured it out because we won how do you have more houses Cut the battle. Oh, he's not happy. Yay! What's up, Mr. Rules? I have indeed triumphed. 1% <laughs> held my weapons abilities. Oh, no! It's the Mega Man X charge attack again. Behold, worms! The real power of rules card. Oh my god. What are you doing? Oh no! He's turning into whatever happened to Lancer too. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god, that that explosion. <sighs> but he can he had to be able to finish saying that and then he's gonna turn to stone all the way, isn't he? Um, yeah, he managed to, to hold it together for a while. Let's go. I want to, like, talk to him or interact with him or anything. I'm sorry, Rules. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't have any control over this. There's a... Oh, somebody's going to say Fuzzy Pickles. Okay, so fuzzy fuzzy pickles is uh is uh is the earthbound thing. The hug thing is cute. This would be this would be Susie. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry, but we have to go earthbound. Is that the same sound effects that the photographer makes in Earthbound? We're facing the wrong way. Oh my god. Amazing. Oh my god, they they turn to give me the peace sign. Oh my god, they, they fuzzy pickled at me instead of the camera. That's really cute. Either that or they were trying to ruin my photo. Are you just going to leave me here? Show me the picture? I'm sorry. Um, I'll say... It's completed its migration. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry, rules. This sounds ominous. What's up? Stop asking me questions. I don't. I can't answer for Chris. I can't. I mean, Chris actually does care. Chris cares about Susie. That I know. I know Chris cares about Susie. Chris has taken actions I didn't control that indicate care about Susie, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Isn't that literally what we they do in Earthbound? I swear to God, there's something like this in Earthbound. Or something. This seems familiar. <laughs> My God, butt crisp. Thank you for following. We also did this in chapter one, too. Oh, are we going to switch to the other party? Is that what I'm thinking of? I feel like... 
Yeah, the Nyx, that's what I was wondering about. A strange moon. Oh, this is Lena Rain. It's really pretty with its super 90s keyboard sound. I'm sorry, I'm listening to the music. You can see the stitches along the sides. So Des is her sister who I guess has passed away. December, her sister Des. Capture someone who's already captured is a good question or a good a good statement. <sighs> rude buster. Yeah, that was some rude bustering happening right there. Yeah, Susie freed them. They uh they got they got um like cause like after the thing, like you saw them, the little them, and then they disappeared. Yeah. She she rescued. Oh my god. Look at how cool looking she is. Susie. Wait, hold on. Do you see the Susie statue right behind her? Do you see the Susie statue right behind her? That's really cute. Uh. Oh my god, the like little like <sighs> Susie, whatever. <laughs> There's some sweat drops there. This is a beautiful song. I want to look at all of the things and get to know Noel better. <sighs> what are you going to say, Susie? How much are you going to tell her? Wait, hold on! Hold up!
Susie. But does Susie have the red heart? I don't think Susie has. How is... How am I choosing Susie's answers? If Chris is the one whose heart I can take and control. Because their hearts, the rest of the party's hearts, are not attacked by projectiles. Man. Man, oh man. I don't know. I feel actually a little less bad. I feel a little less bad if I'm controlling multiple people, then that means that something's up instead of me just ruining someone's control over their own lives, you know? So. Because I know that in chapter one, we do control Susie when we're going through the dungeon. But, uh, I don't think we, I think she kind of did her own thing. Like, I think I tried telling her what to do and she was like, whatever. Like, but like, we have options that we can do. I, like, I think I told her to turn and she was like, whatever, I don't want to turn. Um, but, uh. interesting because it's the it's the red heart that is how we make the decisions and does the heart look exactly the same here as it does when we're telling Chris what to do we're in a dark world let's go ahead and tell her Susie well see if Susie will oh my god right right you can't tell Susie what to do she doesn't listen to you Right. I told her what to say and she didn't say it. That's gonna happen more and more with Chris, I hope. I don't, although like if they have Chris be, if they have Chris be like, I don't know. He could do interesting things with Chris if he wrote, like I said, if he wrote Chris doing something that we really strongly didn't want to have happen and Chris did it and we couldn't stop them, like that would be really, really interesting. Um. <laughs> oh no! Oh my, oh my god! 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 Amazing! Oh my god! 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 Here it goes! Here it goes! Here it goes! Oh my god! just gonna pour her whole heart out here.
or she ate it. I was gonna say, did she eat it? <laughs> Spare, of course. Oh my god. It's really specific. Oh my god. Oh my god, girls. Just... Oh my god, girls. Girls. No, 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 look, look at Susie's face. Look, look at Susie's face. Look at Susie's face. Look, look. Do you see? Are you looking? Are you looking at Susie's face? Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been able to have this kind of moment. I wish I had actually been aware of how I felt about the girl I was interested in when I was a kid. You know? Honestly, I'm so wildly different from either of these two that I wouldn't see myself in either of these. She's put her hand on her shoulder and is like, come on, let's do this. I wish I'd had stories like this when I was a kid. You know? Representation matters. I like knowing that there's all these kids these days who are seeing this and know that this is an option for them, you know? try my hardest to make things for people, for kids, to have things that show them all the different ways you can be and be okay. Even if they've already got it, like, we gotta, we gotta do our best to make sure that the people who are younger than us um, don't have to go through the things that we went through. They're gonna go through their own things, but we can spare them that. wonder what it would feel like to make a story like this and have the power to make a story like this and and know that you're giving kids something you wish you'd had you know that's got to feel pretty good that's got to be a pretty powerful feeling I kind of wish I could reach through time. I know that's not helpful. Obviously, you you can't you can't dwell on it. You know, 
you can't. Um, but it's a relatively new grief for me. So I'm, I'm still kind of going through it a little bit. Yeah. And I guess part of being an adult is processing the things that happened to you, learning from them, figuring out what you can change in yourself to heal from it, and what you can do for other people. Yeah, try to, try to make sure that the world's a little bit better for the people who come after you. And they're gonna go through their own things, you know, but we can't predict, but we can, we can do a little bit. say writing stories inspires and teaches as the main point but I would say writing stories makes you feel things and through feeling you change and grow like stories are the way to change someone's mind not facts or figures and that can be helping people get past you know Helping people see past whatever closed-mindedness maybe they've they've been raised with. Maybe that's helping people heal with their own tragedies and traumas. You don't know. Blessed are old people who plant trees knowing that they shall never sit in the shade of their foliage. Yeah. Let's do that. In whatever way is in our power to do. There are a couple of things you can do as a response to, to trauma and pain. There's a couple of responses you can have. There's perpetuating the cycle and clinging to power yourself to keep yourself safe because there's the powerful and the weak in this world and I'm tired of being the weak so I'll become powerful so pokey from Earthbound there's shutting down or retreating from it because it's because it hurts and you're still so hurt by it that you have to take some time away to heal and and maybe you even just shut down because you can't take in any more than you already have um, and then there's a and there's a third option which is that nobody should ever have to go through what I went through and there's a lot of factors that go into deciding which of those um, a person chooses as their path but you do have some say over which you choose um, and I hope that anybody who has the patience to stick around with me as I talk about stuff like this is probably aware at least of the importance of breaking the cycle of abuse for example or of, of hurt because what we're talking about here I guess is a uh, Maybe not directly abuse, that's just kind of what's been on my mind recently. Um, um, but, uh, I mean, I guess hurtful things in the world. So it was hard and it hurt you, um, but I don't think any of us, I hope none of us are like, I had to suffer, therefore others have to suffer. Or else my suffering won't mean anything. If you make it easier for them, the fact that I survived, it doesn't mean anything. I think maybe that's part of why I have a hard time with people disliking difficulty choice modes in video games as uh, 
I suffered through it. And if somebody else doesn't have to suffer, then that means my suffering doesn't mean anything. No, no. You can make meaning out of what happened to you by changing it for other people, you know? Your working hard on something is not invalidated by others not having to work as hard. So like, I don't know. If you're in a place where the pain is still raw and real and you're not in a position to be able to fight back against it or make those changes or reach out and hold somebody or something through the spikes, like that's fine. That's fine. Try not to get too hurt and try not to hurt others if you can. And, and you know, take your space that you need. Shut down if you need to, whatever it is. Um, that's fine. But if you have it in you, like, try to be a protector. Try to be a changer. Try to make the world softer so that people can stay soft. Um, whether we're talking about the difficulties of growing up gay in the American South in the 90s. <sighs> or seeing abusive influences in a community or a group that you're part of. Um, whatever it is that's making things harder and making things hurt people, like, let's try to be Let's try to be our strongest selves. And you don't have to sacrifice yourself to do it. Like, that's the thing. The, the answer here, the way of doing this, is not to martyr yourself, to harm or destroy yourself to save other people. Like, that's not it. In fact, that won't help because if you use all of yourself up, then there won't be any of you left to do more good. So ration yourself, <laughs> protect yourself, view yourself. If you can't view yourself as being inherently worth saving by yourself, then think of yourself as a resource to help others. You gotta be careful. We're, we're people who play video games. We know about resource management. Be careful with yourself so that the goodness in yourself has more time to do more good. Yeah, I must study politics and war that my sons may study mathematics. And how does that line go? Sorry. It's the line. Where is it? I must study politics and war that my sons may have liberty to study mathematics and their and philosophy. And so their sons can study art and music. Yeah. Like we've made a lot of progress, honestly, like a shocking amount of progress in a shockingly small amount of time as far as like, you know, for example, women and, and at least the US, which is the history that I know the best, at least having the right to vote and the right to have bank accounts in their own names and make at least some health decisions without the approval of a man in their life. Um, it wasn't all that long ago that these things weren't options, but there's a lot of work to be done um, on that front. There's so much work to be done on the front of trying to achieve like equality and fairness for historically marginalized groups of people. Um, there's been great strides made. Um, to like kids growing up in the American South now, gay kids growing up in the American South now have options and support and safety, not across the board without exception, but just in general as a rule. They have things that I never even dreamed of, you know, things that 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 weren't even like conceivable in the 90s when I was a kid. So like That's good, but there's a lot of work to be done, for example, in uh, supporting and protecting our, our trans siblings, specifically. You know, we make progress, and I think we should celebrate progress. I remember 
when marriage equality passed nationally and people I knew in Texas could finally get married to the partners they'd been with for decades. And that's a victory. That's a victory we have to be careful that, we, that they don't backslide on. But that is a victory worth celebrating. But there's so much else to fight for. Um, and uh, I just hope that we can do it. So like, yeah, work on maintaining your resources as, as, as well as you can. Don't spread yourself so thin you can't manage it. But let's try to make the world better, okay? And for some of us, like... Telling stories, if telling stories is what you do, I genuinely believe that Toby Fox is changing the world through the stories that he creates. And obviously he's fabulously successful as a storyteller. Um, and so he's able to reach a wide audience. But even if you like tell a small story and it reaches five people and changes those five people, wonderful. If you create music with love and you share it with love and you reach people and they think about love and kindness that's wonderful if you can sit down and have conversations with people who've never experienced life the way you have and get them to think about your perspective or the perspective of the people you love who've been through different experiences so the definition of privilege or not having privilege um, if you can have those conversations that's beautiful if you can cook food for the people in your life who need someplace safe and, a, and like somebody who cares and that's enough to keep them going, like do that. Whatever it is that your shape of changing the world is that's specific to you and who you are, like let's do it. Omelette is great. I'm so terrible at making omelets. They always turn into scrambled eggs, but um, yeah. Even just like, for, for those of you for whom like living your life and being yourself is setting an example and showing the world that you exist and showing kids who are like you that they can grow up to be like you with maybe a few fewer scars like just keep on living you know even when it's hard because i know that there's a lot of overlap i think between people who have had some of these struggles and it being hard to stay here um, but every day you stay here you're showing other people that you can stay here and so can they. So. <sighs> I'm sorry. I, uh, I didn't really mean to go on a tear about that, but, uh, anyway, folks, shall we get back to, uh, get back to these very gay girls. <sighs> if I had had a single story, a single story as a kid, I can't think of one. Sorry. what it would have meant. <sighs> Got another hydrate to redeem. Yeah, I'm glad kids have these stories. I'm glad kids don't even understand how hard it used to be. I'm glad that, that they hear the stories from the past and experiences in the past and are like, wait, it used to be like that? That's good. 
Yeah, Mercedes Lackey wrote about tragic gay men. Uh, Orson Scott Card wrote about tragic gay men because that fellow just needs to be told that it's okay to want to kiss a boy. It's one of the reasons why it's good to stop hating yourself because hating yourself can hurt other people too. Yeah, but I didn't have any stories about girls, you know? Girls loving girls, just literally nothing, nothing. I can't think of a single book or movie or game. I didn't watch TV, but even then, I can't think of anything that I would have watched. I mean, I know Ellen existed. There was a the Ellen show that was a really big deal and a turning point, but I didn't watch that. And I can't think of anything else. Like, I mean, I guess like there were like, there was anime, like I had a lot of yaoi fangirl friends when I was a kid, but like Sailor Moon, when it came over, they, they're, they're cousins. <laughs> and they, you know? And when we got, like, Hardcaptor Sakura, like, Tomoyo's feelings about Sakura were never gone into like that. So, like... I... I don't know. I don't know. By the time I was in high school, and my friends were consuming gay content that was largely yaoi, not a lot of yuri, um, or shoujo ai. Um, like, by that point, I have schoolgirl crushes, that's all. I am really close friends with this girl, that's all. Don't look in my sketchbook. Please do not comment on the women that you see there and never, ever, ever ask me about the story about the princess and her bodyguard. Nobody's gonna read that. Nobody's allowed to know about that. <laughs> anyway, maybe I should just write the story about the princess and her bodyguard for Nana this year, even though we're like almost a month in. If I write that, folks, maybe I'll share it. <laughs> See if I can dig up an old version of it. And you'd, uh, you'd know what it meant. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Wish I'd been able to ship some girls growing up. Maybe I could have shipped myself with a girl growing up, just, you know? Oh well, can't change that. Onward and upward. We write all the gay stories now. And we share them. Yeah. <laughs> I love um, the auto mod on Twitch. You guys can't see this, but auto mod keeps trying to make sure nobody's using gay as an insult, so it's like catching everything. And I'm like, no, no, auto mod. No, no, the gay is all good here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. But you know, she's reaching right here. She's touching Susie right here. But perspective. It's on this, the, the back shoulder. So like here. See? Automod is here to keep people from being gross and awful, but it underestimates how fabulously gay we all are.
and she want to hang out some more. Oh my god. Oh my god, Susie. Oh my god, Susie. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's so cute. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can I draw a human version of them? Because I can't draw their actual selves because I can't. I'm so bad at it. I've tried. Oh my god, she's so cute! <sighs> this, uh... Oh! Heart. The most romantic thing in the entire goddamn world is being on a Ferris wheel while there's stars and fireworks. <sighs> All right. Oh my god, just I just love. Love Noelle's expression. Like the cute little also like look at the way she's she's looking at Susie. She's got the cheeks, but also her little like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, yes, yes, Toby's like, why do you you don't need fanfic? I'm just gonna give it to you in canon. And I'm like, yes, yes. Do that, Toby Fox. Oh my god. 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 Oh my god, girls. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're freaking out. <sighs> Dreams. Yes, it's like the gold saucer date, or date but... <laughs> would they? Would they? Would they? I feel like Frisk would, but I'm not sure Chris would. <laughs> they were classmates, oh my god. Trying to do control over Susie? I don't know. Is Chris watching what Susie is doing? I don't know. Eat Moss would be funnier if it even registers. But I'm gonna go with this one instead. <laughs> yeah, those do seem like things that Chris would say. It almost seems like it almost seems like um, Susie is imagining what would Chris do and then we have these options that are clearly based on Chris. Or maybe Susie has no idea that I even tried to do this. <sighs> so, uh, Ferris wheels, huh? As long as it is spoiler free or we beat this channel chapter today, you need to send me all of the Ferris wheel fan art. All of it. That's not a request. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna draw it too. I'm gonna draw- I was like, what would I draw? Obviously, the most romantic thing in the world- even though that's not how it goes here, you know I'm going to. I'm gonna draw it. <laughs> so when people are typing. <laughs> oh, oh, I have to drink some more water. Okay. I'm so happy. <laughs> I, but uh, no, okay, so you have to understand the thing that I do is I draw people kissing and snuggling. Like, that's like 90% of what I draw. So I'll just have to do human version of them. Oh, I could try to draw Antho, and you can see why I don't. I'm just not good at it. I'm so bad at it. It's really sad. Oh, man. I have these. These are my sketchbooks from the past many years. These these two shelves. Behold. There's a lot of art. Um, yeah, I used to draw a lot. I haven't kept it up, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I've shown some of them on stream before. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, there's a lot. My, my, <laughs> my ex-sister-in-law used to say, Lauren, you draw people clutching a lot because it'd be like almost kissing or actually kissing or snuggling or sleeping on each other's like shoulder and things like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see. They're on the left right now. It looks like little eyes over the little hearts. What car they were built for? What? <laughs> you don't say, you don't say. Oh my god. At least we know how Noel or we know how Susie feels about Noel now. So, oh, car wheels. Oh my god. 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 Oh my god, Susie. Oh my god, Susie. Susie. Oh my god. Susie is really good at this. Oh my god. Different kind of nervous laugh. Awkward laugh. This girl. <sighs> oh my god, Susie's face. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. See, they're just sitting down and getting to know each other. like being close to your sister again it's weird I had a friend um way back who during a really really hard part in his childhood like his family like like his like parents wouldn't be able to cook so he would get food from 7-eleven like but like American 7-eleven so like gas station food instead of like Japanese convenience store food um and so for him it was comforting if he was stressed out he would get like those like awful hot dogs and the like refrigerated sandwiches interesting the things that can become com comforting to us over time. <laughs> Do you like slime and blood? Yes. <sighs> ah, ha, yes. This is why I can't do horror myself because I can't turn it off. So I just don't turn it on. People that are scared. Oh my god. Oh my god, the awkwardness. 
Susie, are you going to piece things together a little bit? Oh my god. Oh my god, Susie. Oh my god, Susie. Oh my god. Well, I did ask if she was going to piece it together and she did. Um. Oh my god. 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 I. Ah. Uh... <sighs> I actually really like this because you've kind of been wondering what is it that Noelle sees in Susie when she doesn't know her so well? Like, what what is it that draws her to Susie? And is it something that I should be concerned about, child? Um, but this stuff makes sense. You know? Fearlessness. Oh my god. Kiss the girl, kiss the girl, kiss the girl, kiss I'm gonna like go all like Sebastian the Crab in here from The Little Mermaid. You know? You know? It does have that Game Boy Zelda thing. I'm gonna go with this one because it's a funnier word. <laughs> Dude, are they come on come on come on come on come on Toby don't you you you, 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 you come on come No that's not it No No Beautiful. <laughs> now Cece's worried. Oh my god, she's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yes, please let me see what's inside her head. <laughs> Honestly, like, these answers feel like Frisk's goofiness. Come on, Susie. So, like, your answers are, like, literally nothing. It's like you're watching and trying to be like, come on, come on, come on, kiss the girl, kiss the girl, kiss the girl. But you can't control that, so you're just like, oh, no. Susie Zilla. Oh my god, Susie Zilla. Oh my god, oh my god, she's so cute. Oh my god, Susie Zilla has to be tamed by the great winged angel deer who, who hugs her into a friendship and then they kiss. I got this. I got this, folks. <laughs> So the, the reason when we're, why we're talking about wanting to have the kiss is because that would be like a symbol of them actually acknowledging their feelings. And so as people who are like shipping them, they're like, come on, come on, get together, get together. It's totally fine with me if they don't get together right now. I totally have no problems with like things being extended or not coming together. But for me, I'm enjoying the moment of being like, come on, 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 come on. So, it's funny, so I got my Final Fantasy VI fanfic, I'm sorry I talk so much about it, um, but it's a love story between Locke and Sully's because they're my ultimate OTP. <sighs> but, uh, but like, somebody who's reading it, like, gets really frustrated sometimes that it takes a very, like, there hasn't been a kiss yet and we're 140,000 words in and I'm like, look, look, <laughs> you want this to take forever. Just trust me, it'll be better when you get there. 
Um, but yeah, also what Noel Girl is saying is another point that um, I think matters uh, as well. Having people be able to kiss, having like gay folks, queer folks be able to kiss in a piece of media is pretty cool. I mean, if you think about the end of Legend of Korra and how scandalous that was, they hold hands, if I remember correctly, and they look in each other's eyes. And then we have Shira, which is like, I can be full gay. And I was like, please do. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of like the characterization of it, but I have to respect what it was doing um, on a like larger societal scale. So go with that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's another thing. But also for me personally, I'm just like screaming about wanting these girls to get together, but it's totally fine. Um so Federige, um so the the fanfic is written such that you don't have to have played the game. It is sort of a novelization, adaptation that goes through the story of the game. So uh if you don't think you're going to play the game and you want to experience a version of the story um, and a version of the characters, it will take you through most of it. It's still in progress. I haven't finished it yet, but yeah. Oh man, of course Kiyoshi is by. <sighs> Kiyoshi is like the very definition of a bisexual disaster. And I love her. <sighs> Anyway, let's get to know Susie a little bit better. <laughs> oh my god, this is really funny and really cute. I'm gonna go with the left answer because I'm left-handed. Oh my god. Oh my god. God, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Give it Susie has spent so much or er, Susie, Noelle has spent so much time staring at your butt, she knows. <laughs> on her face look at that grin look at that grin look at that grin look at Susie 
Look at Susie. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's so cute. <sighs> ah. They're so cute. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. If Birdly shows up right now. So help me. <sighs> Toby Fox. I feel as though I may be beginning to get a sense for his timing, or perhaps that one was too obvious. <sighs> oh my god. No, that's perfect, honestly. This is absolutely perfect timing. He knows exactly, exactly what he's doing. <sighs> Hi, Birdly. Oh no, it's okay, Noel. Oh, there's on our Discord server in the stream section, there's a totally clips of the heart. This is where clips can go if you want to save them for posterity. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry for the name. <laughs> no, it's just like what? <laughs> Gotta go save the day now, all right? Give her a kiss for good luck. Oh my god! Nugget boy. Okay, that's a great nickname. That's like affectionate and also mocking. Also, I'm pretty sure that that's supposed to be a comma instead of a period after Nugget Boy. I'm sorry. When you have done as much proofreading as I have. I'm... <sighs> May the smarts be with you, oh my god. Oh my god. And then she just jumps down. She's so cool. Oh my god. Yes. Tanky Eagle Fable. Yes. He was roasted. And now he's chicken nuggets. Before I could... Is he going to confess that he's not in love with her because he thinks that he's... That she's in love with him. Is he gonna start shipping Noel and Susie? Oh my god, that would be amazing. Huh. Or is he gonna not do that at all? Oh no!
Oh my god, look at her expression. Look at her expression. Oh my god. Have you actually ever seen this happen in real life? Because it does. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm sorry, Noelle. I'm so sorry, Noelle. Oh my god. Does he have a crush on Susie? Oh no. I really value your friendship is actually like the thing is like as as obnoxious and self-centered and not self-aware as he is like this is actually like a really really sweet way to let someone down i really value our friendship is just such a sweet thing to say that you're just like oh my god birdly This is good though, he needs, he needs, yeah, he needs character growth and he's doing it. Fall in love with Susie? Oh my god, oh my god, look at his anime eyes. He just got anime eyes, I think he just got anime eyes. Toby Fox. God damn it, Toby Fox! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. This is perfect. <laughs> Oh my god, 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 that's amazing, oh my god. Everything about why that scene, like just, oh my god. Amazing. Amazing. That was amazing. Oh my god. That was amazing. The like, what, what, what you say, and then it cuts. It's so great. It's so great. It's so great. Oh my god. That entire section feels like I was hanging out with Toby Fox writing fanfic together. <laughs> amazing. 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 That was amazing, folks. That was incredible. I just... Oh my god. And then like the end on like the comedy. And we couldn't take the characters, like, the characters can't have their conclusions yet. We're too early in this story for them to, like, get together because they still have some growth to do before they can do that. But it was great. Oh, my God. Dragon Imps, I appreciate that that was what you wanted to see. I, I hope you were satisfied. I hope it was worth it. <clears throat> oh, my God. Amazing. So that's why... <laughs> Who knows what they were talking about? We'll never get to know because we weren't there for that. And Chris is not going to tell us. Oh my god. Oh my god, it makes the it makes the spot. <sighs> She's like gloating. She's like, "I just almost kissed a girl." Did you almost kiss a girl? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Uh-uh. <sighs> For also look at his face, his little ah. Uh, 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 <laughs> this okay. There's no way he can be evil. There's no way. Like this, he he's really bad at keeping secrets, but he's trying. But he can't be like evil. Like just kidding. That was sarcasm. I miss you. He's a baby cuteness. Yes, I don't think he's evil. I really don't. I think he's a, I think he's up to something, but I don't think it's evil. He's so cute. 
<laughs> oh my god, everyone's fine and dandy. We're all good. Let's go. Oh, look at this. It's a save point. Everyone is together, but the wind blows coldly. Oh no, I feel like there's a final boss up ahead. I'm going to take a super brief break and leave you with this music. It's not music. See you shortly, folks. Be good. Don't get into trouble. Oh, I should save. You're right. I should save in case it crashes. You are filled with a certain power. Okay. File saved. There you go. You get your snacks. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sophie, say hi to everybody. Hello, Sophie, Sophie. Who's a baby? Who's a baby cat? Who's it, Sophie? Oh my god, kitten. Oh my god, kitten. 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Isn't she adorable? Mm, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby girl. Look at what a cutie. Look at her foot. Oh, okay. I was going to show you her foot. But she said no. Look at her little paw. Look at her little face. Little baby. Little baby meow. Little baby meow. She has really cute paws. Little kitty tail. Alright, so, so, so. Alright, Sophie. You gonna sit on my lap? On your little cardboard thing? She's gonna sit on my lap with her cardboard thing. Okay, kitten. Is that good? Is that good? She doesn't sit on my lap, like, generally. Okay. My room is a total mess. But... Here is a cat. I have to be very careful not to show you the messy room. Anyway, there's a cat on my lap, and she's the best. She's a very good kitty. So she doesn't like to sit on my lap, just plain on my lap. <clears throat> but she will sit on my lap on her little cardboard thing. Oh, Mega Spell, you came out to your parents so you could hug your dog? And it turned out well, so you're going to go hug your dog? That sounds like the best possible thing. Things going well and hugging dogs? Amazing. No, Blue Glass, you don't understand. My room is too messy. I would have to shift a few things around before I would put the camera around. Well, congratulations, Mega Spell. That's really exciting. I know that sort of thing can be scary to do. So I'm very glad for you. It turned out well. Sophia. Sophia. Little Sophie, Sophie, Sophie. Little Sophie, Sophie, Sophie. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just cat time. Look at this kitten. Look at this kitten. Behold the baby. Yeah, she likes having her belly rubbed. Yes, and she's got something with like the way her jaw is, so her little teeth hang out all the time, and her tongue sticks out a lot. She's just a cute little meow meow meow. Who's a cute little meow meow meow? Is it Toffee? Is it Toffee? Is it Toffee? Toffee, 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 we don't get as much cat time on screen as we used to when I had Knox around because Knox was always in the way. Um, but uh, but Sophie will hang out like this. This is basically how we get Sophie time. It is her on her little cardboard scratcher and her cardboard scratcher on my lap. Baby, 
Mm, baby. Oh, she's so cute. She was sitting outside my, my door on her little cardboard scratcher, so I brought her in with me. Sophia. Oh, that's true. I don't think she's going to do what Ella did and stomp on the desk and ruin the ending of the game, which I assume some of you at least have seen. You got my controller. Hi, baby girl. All right, kitten. Kitten, kitten, kitten. I'm going to have to move things around a little bit because cat is in the way. All right. Let me put this here. All right. Yes, Sophie, that's right. Oh, you got a belly. You got a belly. You, you do. Sorry. I never baby talked to cats until I got Knox. Knox is a baby cat. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, Sophie, Sophie. Oh my god, Sophie. She's like trying to like play with the. She was trying to play with the cord. Now she's yawning. She yawns a lot. Oh my god, are you guys doing Big Shot, but it's about petting cats? Because that's amazing. I approve and I'm very amused. Oh my god, Sophie. Sophie. Okay. So. After that little cat interlude, which, uh. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> that's funny, seriously. No, um, I will I'll give you guys more, more, more cat moments. I just have to not have my room be the mess that it is. Oh my god, Sophia. Sophia, 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 Sophia. Oh, anyway, just trust me. She's being really cute right now. Let's play a video game, shall we? Sophia, are you a big shot? Are you a big shot? Please do not get involved with weird, mysterious, chaotic figures of chaos. Is definitely a factor. So... I don't know the specifics of how that's going to shape up. But are we going to have like a chaos versus order thing? In the Suicoden world, order is actually not good either. Sophie, are you an agent of chaos? Please do not play with all of the cables. Do not bite the cord of my capture card. She's just kind of halfway, like just like pawing at it really absently. She's a silly girl. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Yes, they, they, they watch Invisible Enemies. All right. Sophie. She doesn't, fortunately, doesn't eat them. She doesn't eat electronics. She just paws at them and occasionally chews on wires a little bit, but not much. Task Manager does hang out with Task Cats. Look at this. So the, the Black Wind Howls. Um, there's, what are the other? There's a few games that have lines very similar to that towards the end or or in the f optional final dungeon <laughs> yes no but what's the other one um there's a yeah but what's the phrasing what's the phrasing yeah so black wind howls is chrono trigger what's the what's the black wind blows through you thank you i was trying to remember Oh my god, we are too lazy. Thank you so much for giving subs to folks. Oh my goodness, hold up. There's a butler. Fishing for lost pottery in the ass. What I found Wait, hold on. Is it going to be our backs? Is it the photo that we posed for? I want to see it. Hello, boat. Yes, it has migrated. I want to see it, but I'm sure that it exists. I'm sure that the fan art community has taken care of this for us. I want to see what the save text is again. Everyone say that the wind blows coldly, so it's not exactly the same, but I think it's supposed to be reminiscent. You know, I think it's supposed to be reminiscent of other games that Toby Fox has most assuredly played that do that. Oh, maybe Susie would have appreciated it with the rude gesture. Maybe so. 
filled with a certain power. It's just such an interesting phrasing. Such an interesting phrasing. I'm glad to know that the internet had fun with the swatchlings. More power to you, internet. I will probably not go searching for that, but... Well, thank you. We are too lazy for dropping by and giving some gift subs. Like, thank you. That's very kind of you. I had an inkling that Toby Fox likes video games. Just a slight suggestion. Let's see. Gizmo, hello. Did you enjoy your food? I am not sure what I'm going to have for dinner. Goodness, hello! Where <laughs> were we? Strongly blocks the way. <sighs> you were wire wire, but you're not. Check. Standard. Absorbed the wire and became stronger. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's. Oh, geez. No, 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 no. I need to stop panicking. Strong. I just keep saying strong, just and also strong. Did you mention strong? How about strong? Did you know about strong? Should we be tough or should we be sweet? Yeah, no, I appreciate that electronic ferret. Um, because I want to check everything. But I also don't want to die. Let's see what B-Tough does. <sighs> Fighting spirit. Maybe that's not the right way to go. Oops! I'm gonna die. I'm sorry, I'll say I've let you down. I'm just standing there. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It is really hard, actually. I'm having a hard time with this fight. Let's try to be sweet. I'll try to be cold next. I pretend not to care. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Oops. It's pretty tough. Alright, you're gonna heal yourself. Please heal yourself and don't die. I need to try to be better at these if I think I'm going to be able to fight Durable. <laughs> it would be if it had a loot. Okay. Hold on. I want him to heal himself. I love the little tiny bit of Asgore's theme at the end. Which, I mean, makes sense in a way for Asgore's theme to actually be in this because Asgore is Chris's dad. I suppose that's true, I could save. I'm gonna see what Be Cold does and then I'm gonna spare them. Yay! Oh, getting lots of money here. Determination has Asgore's theme in it. I'm concerned about the certain power. But I can't backtrack. Like, the boat doesn't go any further. Oh, I mean, I guess this has a... I guess this has a... Okay. Hello, friend. Are they still in there? 
yeah, please, please don't tell me to backtrack or not backtrack or whatever. Um, I'm still experiencing the game. Oh my god. Oh, Birdly. All right, there are no more bookcases. Thank you, Toby Fox. <sighs> Talk. Head butler. The writing is just so funny. It's just, it's so clever. Environment of a Lightner's dream. So again, dreams in the dark world. Dreams. Hopes. Or hope in the light world, perhaps. And dreams in the dark world. Oh, you defeated that simpleton. Wonderful. Bouquets. Oh my god. Hello. I know we have at least one French person watching. Here. Um, rules card can absolutely butcher your language as well. It's not enough for him to butcher ours. Bouquets. Oh my god, it's like something my sister would say. She's really bad at pronouncing French. Bum, bum, bum. Task manager told me she saw him in the hallway. Oh my god. Amazing. Hello, DT Mark. <laughs> Your minion for life. Oh my god. Hopefully electrocuted to the ground. That is task manager. Yes, yeah, so this is this is new. This is new dialogue that wasn't here before. It should have been yellow, but it wasn't. Enough of the unpleasant trees. Would you like a toasted marshmallow? That should have been yellow, but it's not. Amazing. Alright. So I have to go talk to everyone now. I hope you're prepared for this. La 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 la. Buttery thing, yes. Okay. Here we go. Alright. I didn't I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Okay, so it doesn't look like they have updated what they've said. But I'm gonna go through it anyway, just in case. Found by someone. so interesting the fact that they don't like they're like the like people being like oh I'm sure this person is now too successful to talk to us and they get more and more successful yes something disappeared which I could hear a voice on the other end, but when I put the receiver in my ear, there's nothing but garbage noise. So that tells us if it's anything like our garbage noise, it goes to the outside world. Yeah, that he didn't need us anymore, did he? Is like, I like, so when he's not very, when he doesn't value friendship, like his friends kind of ditched him when he became successful. It's interesting. Yeah. So interesting. I don't know what your deal is, friend. Oh, that's right, actually. The shadow crystal, one of... You have collected one, it just feels really ominous and I'm really curious. Oh! I'm gonna have to try to fight gerbil so I can see if I have collected two. 
Electronic ferret, I can't stretch. I've got a cat on my lap, so I will stretch with one hand. Oh, wait. Actually, no, I can stretch my shoulders. Yes. Wait, hold on. Oh. Hello, pop-up. No, I'm not fighting you. Yes, I'm gonna fight Gerbil. I think I'll be able to spare them. I don't know. Okay, there we go. I accidentally clicked on a flaming eggplant holding a chainsaw. Oh no! Oh man, let's try not getting hit. I need, oh shoot, I need to try to get better at these things so I can get better at fighting gerbil. Oh my god, upgrade, what are you gonna do, Susie? Keenly aware of the fear it invokes. Amazing. What is she gonna do? Oh my god. I forgot about this. Oops. Petting. Ba, 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 ba. Low poly yarn. Oh my god, that was totally Susie's, Susie's little laugh sound. Can you the jungle now? Oh my god. Oops. There's gotta be something else that I can do here. Alright, actually, no, we're just gonna go ahead and pet you. And you'll spare. <laughs> there we go. Amazing. Okay, they're like, no, you can't go this way, Lauren. <sighs> Hello, friend. Roller coasters. Public merry-go-round. Oh! Some ex-famous guy, some salesman lobbyist type. He was afraid of clowns, so he kept the merry-go-round from happening. Okay. Well, that sure is... Oops. Sorry. Hello. Sorry, folks. We're doing this. All right. Hi, Sophie. Yes, yes, baby. I think this will do it. Consciously clicked on a pop of monster strips. Oh my god. Oh my god. say awesome. well that was interesting kind <laughs> of broken link
Uh, you go after this guy. And you go after this guy. Oh my god, hold on. Thanks, Toby Fox. He is a unique person. Oh, hello, Hacker Man. So your signature is a credit card. I tried to encrypt my signature by drawing random squiggles. I didn't like that. What? Oh my god. Okay, Hacker Man. La, 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 la. Did I not go here before? Pink ribbon. Oh, that would have been really good. That would have actually been really good. in specific situations anyway. Queen? I don't know what this does. She says, thanks, Queen. Oh, would that have actually made Spamton hard or easier? Oops, hello. But all the shopkeepers went to the trash dump. Oh, those guys that we were talking about, talking to with a... Were the were the 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 shopkeepers here in the city? Oh, how interesting. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Oh, hello. <laughs> Using these cones for what? <laughs> Susie. Okay, so those guys did have their backs turned to us. I thought they had faces. Amazing. Alright, we're gonna go this way. man assimilated before I got controlled oh see because like being a salary man means that like you're basically assimilated and you've lost your uh, you've lost yourself interesting everyone else is aware wire <laughs> I'm sure I'd make all oh look at this it totally advertises the Ferris wheel Ralsei has no way of knowing about this. Susie didn't say a word. <laughs> Meanwhile, of course, Susie is not. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Alright folks, 
That alone makes the backtracking worth it. I'm sorry. But that says a lot, doesn't it? Oh, hello. Crushing existential dread. Oh my god, I forgot about this. This is really cute. But you notice that we can see what Ralsei is thinking. Still. So I think that we are still actually. I think Ralsei is trying to do an ever ending story, um. Uh. Childlike Empress thing, I feel. There, there was, um, it was just a, it was just Susie thinking about what a Ferris is. That's amazing. Yes. George Washington Gale Ferris. Excellent. Hi, Sophie. Yes, hello. Hi. Yes, baby cat. Who's a kitten? It's Sophie. Sophie's a kitten. Sorry. You have to deal with me petting this cat. Sophie, 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 Sophie. Oh, meow, meow, meow. Either way, it's not something that Ralsei should know. He has no way of knowing. Like, there's no way that Ralsei would know that based on what we know of Ralsei. <laughs> Foxes, this is what it's about. Oh, that's right, she hasn't, this is when we were split up, yeah. She's like, oh yeah, boxes. Meow, meow, meow. Hello, friend. Tear the garbage. Oh, a garbage that big before, except for the dancing garbage that lives in the trash heap. I assume that that's referring to the trash trash can friend. Trashy. Horrible statue, but the execution was very good. Two stars. <laughs> oh my god, this is just a little awkward. It's in a better place now. In the... Love the acid pit. Oh, it was in the toilet. That's right. Okay. I thought there was part of it in the acid pit. Oh, hello, friend. Oh, my goodness. This is interesting looking. Support the rebels, but they aren't here. Not sure I would support them. Don't want to eat bagels. Okay. Suppose I should heal just in case. Power of silence. Interesting. Probably should have looked to see what all of the uh, save points said along the way. All right. Can we actually go into this one? No. Okay, so there's still some enemies here. I don't really want to fight you though. Oh well. Iro Viracoon. Tender loving care. Look at how cute they are. Ralsei has baked a cake with rainbows. Susie has a death needle. And uh, Chris is bringing tea and Dr. Mario meds. Kindness is contagious. It is, and we should spread it. Just like don't spread like diseases. Oh, sorry, Sophie. Oh my God, Sophie, hello, Sophie. Sophia, you should turn it on me out. Just in case. A pansexual pride rainbow? I will take a look at that. Oh, wow, the chest is empty. Oh, I can go this way, never mind. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Sorry, folks, that we're just like basically going through the entire game. Oh shoot, I did that wrong. All right. 
You're not just telling me to backtrack because you want to win the bet, do you? Oh my god. Oh, that's cute! Are you an enemy or can I talk to you? Shopkeepers went to the trash dump. <laughs> That's funny. I'm amused by that. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, there's a way to get through here without fighting, actually, from the looks of it. I actually paid attention to this. Nice. Well, I'm glad that they tell you where the shopkeeps are if you backtrack. So you go to the trash dump. Oh my god, look at those cats. seen this before oh my god oh my god okay so the way this is phrased is an earthbound reference if you haven't played earthbound so it'd be a pencil shaped eraser so then you need the pencil eraser to erase the pencil or the eraser eraser excuse me this is amazing I am really delighted both the, uh, the the weirdness and absurdity of the fact that it's a giant toilet and the fact that it's an Earthbound reference. Yeah, he definitely went all in on his Earthboundness here. Okay, so I can't go that way. Okay, well I didn't- I don't know if I saw his tweet about the toilet because this doesn't seem familiar. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, well, I'm glad to know that. All right. All right, okay, hold on. I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at this. I'm trying to be like I can do this. Wait, no, hold on. You're going to dance for this one. You're going to spare this one. Oh, I guess you could just do that. That's fine. Oh my god, it's so cute. Oh, Zulily, that's that's funny. I like that. All right. So I feel like we've gone through the dump a whole bunch. We've talked to everyone I think that we can dump talk to. We've looked at things. Susie's commented on more stuff. We couldn't go forward. Our way was blocked. This was totally worth it for that, though. And, like, I just want to remind everybody that, like, as much as I would like to be able to find everything that there is to find, I'm not going to. And because of my, uh, because of my contrariness, even if I was going to be inclined to go back, I won't now. Um, because I don't like being told to do stuff. 
that's not how I... Holy crap! This little guy... That little guy's determined. That little guy really wanted to... Mostly filled with a... Oh my god. I'm glad to know. This is delightful. Sophie is very cute. I know you, and you. I think this isn't the way I wanted to go, actually, no. Sophie is a cute meow meow. Yes, no, people are very dedicated about wanting to, uh, to backseat me in this game. Which actually did happen to some degree in Undertale, but... If we got anything new here. A limiter, yes. I was really excited to tell the person who taught me about limiters in, in, in mixing music that limiters were mentioned and I knew what it was. Alright. They're so cute. Dark Fountain showed up. Night Fountain. Night It. She looks like a mom tends to overheat. It's just so good. See computers overheat. See, it's funny. Lemon drops. So cute. So the, the, the little guy who wanted to sneak into the basement was Spamton. And then this real high class client is Rules. And the blueprints, because I was like, there's no way. There's no way it could be the blueprints. But it is in fact. Bum, 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 ba -da -da. Oh shoot, I was trying to avoid fighting these guys. Smorg is bored too, because it's a little bit of everything. Meow, 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 meow. Because he'll... Oh shoot, I forgot. Okay. I'm the fever, I'm the chill. If you didn't get the, uh... If you didn't get the Dr. Mario references yet... It was right there for you. All right. Yes, you're going to spare this one. You're going to S action this one. And you are going to pacify this one. Commiserated with the enemy, that's cute. Let's take it to the man, dude. Holding your shelf self or whatever. Incredible. So cute. All right. And by then we should be able to spare. Yay! All right. God, it's such a good song. Hello. Don't get to do anything with you, but you've got a hat. See, nobody else has the hearts. Where does this take me? Oh, shoot. Oh, right. coasters under construction. Someone tried to use it anyway. Haha. 
I want to get up to the special top of the thing. Bombs, explosions, heart, these things. Let's try this again and see if I can do better with the D-pad. Oh my god. I'm really struggling here. Um, I want, I don't know why I want to do it, but I want to do it anyway. Sorry, folks. It's probably not going to amount to anything. I got a treasure chest. Amazing. Ragger too. Oh my god. Amazing. Thank you, folks. Do I want... It's Toby Fox. Of course I do. Bum, 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 ba -da -da. Worst healing, better attack. No thanks. Oh, I'm a prickly prince. Oh, how cute. I'll protect everyone. So cute. care enough to do it. No, I don't. I know he's going to have something totally absurd. Oh, that's interesting. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's like layers of these things. How awful, but also very clever. Yeah, no, I'm happy to... Oh, I did that. Wow. I'm happy to, uh... To get new items and see what they do and what it says. And what my friends say about them. Oops. No, I want you to hit the bombs. If you explode all the bombs, does it do something? Because it looks like there's nowhere else I can go from go here. sent a dancing person up somewhere. That has to mean something. Where did the dancing person go? Because it's like all these bombs, but there's a dancing person that went somewhere. Come here, come here, come here. Okay. There's gotta be something else. Oh, here's another dancing person. No, there we go. person go up this way? No. Okay, I think I've hit the dead end here. No, I want to talk to that person. Hold on, we got a loop. Oh, there's going to be you. I don't want to fight you. Alright, I managed to successfully not fight you. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. Hello. Help you save. <laughs> All right. Doesn't seem like there's actually very much new in most of these places, actually. Oh, I should probably heal. Let's heal. Power of noise music. 
All right, so like, hello. There's someone that, like cleaning as much as me. Hmm, I talked to you before. Oh man. Apple. Hello. Newbert's not here. of that is cool. Okay, so you can't go back that way. Oh, you get a silly little hat. Don't tell me. That, that creature and I, we both don't want to have spoilers. So I think I've been everywhere there is to go here. Man, Ralsei definitely knows things he shouldn't know. Oh my goodness, hello, what? Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. I don't remember seeing that before, but I must have broken it. Oh right, we've got the cool lighting effects here. These little dancing guys. Oh my god, it's a kitty butt. La 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 la. La 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 Did they see me? They saw me and they got stuck. <sighs> Amazing. I have been kitty cornered. Amazing. I guess I have no choice. All right, that was amazing. Okay. Thanks for coming by, Samovar. It was very, uh, very good gayness that we had. Oh my god, hello kitty. It has seen me and it wishes to apprehend me. Oh no! Okay. Sorry folks, I feel like I'm just like speed running these, uh, these fights now, but I feel like we've already seen fights in this game, you know? So, uh, meowing to be minimized. It wants attention. It wants to sleep. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Oh my god, I love the kitty butt stuck in the window. La, la, la. La, 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 la. La, la, la. Dancing 
dancing guys. Did I do that wrong? Oh, right. I forgot about that. And then it just goes straight down. I was really proud of that. I did a good job there. Okay. I've done this. Alright. Why is it a teacup ride anyway? Yes, teacups are now easy. Okay, so there, there's not anything here. <sighs> it feels like there's quite... There's a few small things that have been worth it. Largely, like, frankly, Ralsei and the, uh, and the... These little dancing guys are very cute. I feel like that's everything. Yeah, that's everything here. So the only other place I haven't been through, a few places in here, I think, maybe. With a certain power. Oh, hi friend. He's such a precious little baby. I like him. La 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 la. I love that this has been consolidated into one room. But see, even that, like, you is, like, telling you. I don't know. It's interesting. Mint under your electric cage. Well, it feels as though... Oh, baby cat. Oops, that's not where I went to go. I got distracted by Sophie. Hello. Hello. Oh my god, she's so cute with her little belly up and her little paws and her little face. I feel as though I have been everywhere. And I'm trying to think if there's anyone to talk to that I haven't talked to again. Short of going back into, like, the basement. The music is so good. All right, so we're gonna go back down here. Just in case. Honestly, the more folks hint at things, the less I'm going to look around. I'm sorry. He is a spade, that is correct. Oh, perfect, Smacky, and this is a good haunted house playlist sound. Yes, they took out some of the rooms. I appreciate that they've done they've done things to a uh... There's still nothing in here. Like the These little plugs still doing nothing. Yeah, okay. So there's not a lot that you can do here. So that seems to be done. Like, at this point, I'm not sure there's anything else that I haven't seen a lot of... There's anybody that I haven't spoken to. Like...
Hello, Sophia. Sophie's got a little belly. My favorite song? Oh, man. That's induced to traffic jam. I love it. Um, gosh. I don't know. Oh, this tells you there's... This tells you there's teacups. Which there are. <laughs> oh, well, I tried... I... Oops. I try to be reasonably thorough in investigating. Just so you know, you, you clean the cat's footprints there. All right, Susie. Sorry, here we go again. My favorite music in this game, I don't know. Sorry, Susie. She got stuck. She got stuck. Amazing. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. So she doesn't hit the this room. Oh my god. Amazing. Like, oh my god, the queen. <sighs> Hi, Sophie. Oh my god, you're so cute. Oh my god, you're so cute. Oh, baby cat. I feel like I've been everywhere that I can think of. Like, I'm trying to think if there's any characters that I know of that I haven't talked to or locations I haven't been to. Zip. Oh, hello! Newbert's moving up in the world. which puzzle they're talking about. We just did that today. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you, Toby Fox, for knowing that people like me are around here. Sweet, every mouse is gonna be wearing a wig. Incredible. 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 Hi, Sophie. Yes, you're very cute. La 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 la. I don't know what to do with this information. I'm just listening to the music. I feel like... Yes, Susie. I wonder if Susie will say something if you leave her behind. No? Okay. I love that she just keeps smashing everything there. It's great. Alright, let's go back through our cheat doors. I did this one already. Here we go. Here's one of them. Hello, friends. I want to know what the night is. I feel like I've been everywhere. Like, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else that I haven't spoken to. You know?
That feels... That feels like a very Chris thing to do. Uh, they're reminiscing about our ride. No, they want to get into trouble. They want to cause trouble for everyone, rather. Well, I'm just, I'm trying to think if there's like literally anyone else or anything else that I have seen that I haven't gone back to. I'm like, I've been to both of the shops. I went all the way through the city. I went all the way through the trash dump. I feel like I've done everything. At this point, frankly, like, anything else would be out of obligation of feeling like I'm going to let everyone down if there's something that I don't see. But I really strongly don't feel like... Like, I have any idea what it could possibly be. Oh! 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 Okay, first of all, we're gonna do this. She gets a special room. That's not the same as everyone else's room. All sorts of clothes inside. <laughs> Are you imagining it, Susie? Oh my god, Susie. <laughs> Where? Where is it? Where is it? I want it! I want it! I want it! Also, I should probably get- I sh Oh, I didn't buy any healing items. I should probably go buy some healing items, actually. Okay. Can she fight with it? Please tell me it's a weapon. No! No! Okay, well, fine. Catalogs of search results. Most things couldn't be made into objects. Huh. I wonder why her searches are... Is Icy real cryptid? Oh my god. Oh my god. We're just gonna take all of it? Every page is the last month. Every day is the 25th. Yeah. Every day is Christmas. But they don't tell you. They don't say December. To bed, go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Just because she's a deer doesn't mean she has ticks. That's rude. That's rude. All right. Oh man. It's not your bed anyhow. Amazing. I'm curious what she must have been Googling for this. I am a bed inspector. That's true. I inspected the beds. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see. I'm going to... Hmm. I need to go shopping, actually. I'm sorry, folks. We did all of that, and then I forgot to go shopping. La, 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 la. Yes, they have a lot about search history, so. It's interesting that most of her searches can't be shown, and then like, like, it doesn't tell us what her search queries were, whereas the others, the others, um, had they told you what their uh, told you what their um, search queries were that prompted those things? But I feel like Noelle's wasn't like that. Like I mean, I don't know if she looks up like what day is Christmas or what, but they don't tell us. Okay, I've got lots of money, so I'm gonna buy a lot of healing items. It be in your oh it'll okay it goes it goes off screen. Hold on, let's see. Wrong.
wrong. No, no, wrong, no. Alright, so it's all full up. So I have here one, two, three big heels, and then one, two, three group heels. That feels like a pretty solid choice. Oh, and if you go shopping, you can stick stuff in here and then you can access that from save points without having to go shopping again. Amazing. All right. Um, hmm. I might buy another one of each of these in case I need to refill. Thanks, it'll be in your storage locker. Got it. Got it. La 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 um, I think I'm just going to go onward, honestly, because otherwise I'm going to get kind of frustrated, I think. So we're just going to go. Yes, no, I have a very strict no spoiling, no backseating pa uh, policy, so I've... I apologize in advance if I have missed a thing that you wished that I had seen. Um, it's possible that we will replay this chapter um, before the rest of the game comes out. Um, it's possible that we won't, um, but because I am a person who is playing these games on my own, <laughs> I want to have an experience that's the way I play the game. Oh, interesting. Oh, shoot. I did that badly. All right, let's see if I can do this safely. All right, we did okay there. All right. Oh. Oh, I forgot that I had these, yes. I can use ultimate healing closers. Poses for photos at times. Oh my God, that's cute. All beds, inexplicably, yes. Oh, this is a fancy mm -hmm. puzzle thing. No, that's not the actual queen. That's the thing on the floor, Susie. Oh, no, that's the actual queen. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Susie's all mad. <laughs> My sweet idiot children. I feel like this is a great, very internet greeting. Just in time to witness my world domination. I do see that there is the darkness fountain, dark fountain behind you. Let's see. Noelle in your possession, she's not. Time before her will turns. No. She unleashes her power. Oh my god, I thought the queen was just like picking on her because that's what queens do. I didn't realize that maybe she's actually trying to use the power of a lightener to do something. Blanketing the world in. What are you wanting to do? Susie, you should have let her finish so that we knew what her nefarious plan was. <laughs> her face? She looks so disappointed. Who this? Um. Uh. That's concerning. This is the bad stuff's about to go down music. I believe the same song played in chapter one. 
Adult looks are suitable for teenagers. Great. Whole family can enjoy eternal servitude. <sighs> it's the oh ho ho ho. Well, she's she's clearly speaking all internety, so she can. All right. Sort of regal, mostly cruel. After. Yeah. Where is Noel? You can't actually permanently damage Noel. <sighs> oh my God. Yeah. This is this is from King threatening to drop Lancer. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is that this is that same that same music, the same I'm going to threaten your friends. Oh my god. Amazing. Susie is serious business. Susie is serious, serious business. Look at her. She's like making super cool hero face. Cause she's super cool. You too. Are there two of us? She's talking about the light nurse, of course. Notice that the queen is sitting at a different angle than we've seen her before. Like her, also she's totally in chariot. Amazing. This song's destiny is for those to be wailing, duetting, harmonizing electric guitars. Crystal, do you mean the thing right behind Ralston? Hi, Sophie. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, Sophie, are you gonna? Oh, you wanna play? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Sophie. Oh, amazing. Funny. I'm glad that he's a, that he's he's trolling folks. Listen to that piano. Oh my god, Sophie is trying to play with her toy on my desk. Sorry, folks. Oh, shoot. I usually stop at 5, don't I? Now it's 6 and I haven't stopped almost 5.30. Oh, baby. Is that what you wanted? I'm sorry, folks. I know we've got... I know we've got to play the game, but... I don't know, Axel. I made a mistake. If we don't win this fight, I'll probably do it over again next week, sorry. Queen defenseless. Oh good, Birdly, and we can't target him. Loosen, oh, I don't get to check her. What's up with that? I'm gonna regret not stopping at five, aren't I? Because I haven't eaten. Oh well, that's fine. 
Uh, group loosen. Throw. Dual heal. Look at that. Nice. That's cool. Red damage. Oh! Oh, we're freeing Birdly! No, Queen. Oh, shoot! Oh, jeez, no, no, no! Okay, smells like overclocked high heels, amazing. Lightners have already been asleep. Oh no! Toby Fox is making commentary on uh, our relationship with technology. Um. Oops. Come on. Oh, jeez. Are you what? No. I don't like this. Acid shield. Oh, jeez. That's not good. I don't like that. Toast? Toast. Oh my god, look at how serious Elsa is being. Each day they spend hours worshiping. So what's interesting is, um, like, as much as she's like goofy, funny, haha, silly, silly, haha, like, there's just. Oh no! Hold on, sorry. Oh. She, she got drunk. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, the, she's still talking like herself, so she can't talk all cool like the king did. Um. But there's something serious. Staring, tapping, to receive joy, to avoid pain. I mean, it's not untrue. You know? Oh, jeez. Try not to die, I'll say. Yeah. Recently, when the town's internet disappeared. Ah. Ah. The refuge they take in the screens will slowly fade. So the internet went down, and now she's worried. Oh jeez. Oh my god, these her battle things last a long time. Regal laughter. Strange and sad searches. Oh, jeez. <sighs> oh, when they say she 
she heals based on how much TP you have, I think, is what's going on there. I see, I see. No, it's not. No, it does have to be 100%. Never mind. I misunderstood. I misunderstood. So, like, honestly, it's pretty late. And I, I want to be able to, uh... I want to be able to, uh, to have time and not feel rushed and panicky from not having eaten. So I kind of want to go on <laughs> because I know there's going to be, well, actually, no, there'll be the entire after section of the game. So we can do that next time. All right, we're gonna try. <sighs> well, like, okay, like, I don't remember, when did I save last? Like, part of me is like, I'll just let myself like be defeated here and then go save. <laughs> Thanks, Vanessa. Did I save just before this fight? Are you sure? Can we confirm? Because this is really good stuff and I want to dig into it and you won't mind if I <laughs> revisit this dialogue. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah, if somebody can confirm that I saved, saved. Can you, is it possible to go back and watch a VOD? I'll just let myself die here. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I just, I completely lost track of time. So I'm waiting. Justin is is working some magic to check and make sure that I did save because I don't know for sure if I did, and I don't trust myself. Oh my god, 24 hour stream! I don't do 24 hour streams because they are bad for your health. The only way I would do a stream like that is if people were trading off in shifts. Ah, stretch. Ah, <sighs> I did save. Justin says so. Okay. Then we're going to do this. Sorry to like cut off in the middle of dialogue there. But I want to like, I want to see at least some of her dialogue fresh. So thank you, Justin, for checking that. Whew, that's a note to end on. That's a note to end on. Because there's good stuff and I want to be fresh and I want to not be... <laughs> I want to not be like hungry or sad or tired or anything like that. Because if you'll recall, for those of you who watched me be Undertale... I stayed up super late and was so tired and confused and had forgotten story things and stuff. And I don't want that to happen here. So I'm going to do this. And I'm sorry for those of you who lost the bet. Let's see. Let, him, let me, let me end the bet. Let me see. Hold on. We did a, we did a, we did betting. Stop the bet. Okay. I don't know what happened. I don't know what just happened. Did we get, did, did something happen? Betting stopped, you can no longer bet on anything. I don't know what it, what it did. How do I, how do I, how do I, but do I, how do I see? I don't know how this works. I'm sorry, folks. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know who bet what or who won. <laughs> it's a mystery. Um, I am going to be streaming next week. I will be doing this next Saturday. I don't understand Flutie Bot's betting features either. Maybe I should have looked at that. Oh, oh, next stream will, oh, is tomorrow daylight saving time? Oh no, oh no. Huh, well, thank you for joining me as we went over a little bit. Oh, Sophie wants out, oh, I'll let her out soon. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of good things going on and I'm really interested in, uh, 
I'm really interested in figuring out, like, I assume we're going to be returning to the light world for a section, um, just as we did at the end of chapter one. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, well, it's U.S. Daylight Savings and uh, North America Daylight Savings, at least, because I think Canada has the same time. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to digging into more. Um, uh, no, Nick, I haven't settled into the next stream and I can't do an entire weekend of streaming. I can't do that. <laughs> That's a very special occasion thing. Um, I'm trying to take tomorrow off off because I haven't haven't actually had a day off in a couple of months <laughs> between work and streaming um, and projects and things like that. So I'm going to try to take some time off. Um, but tomorrow, not tomorrow, next Saturday, we should pick this up um, and hopefully do the end of it. Um, yeah, it will be kind of smash mat. Um, I guess we'll dive into Psychonauts too when we're done with that. Um, so as a reminder to everybody, um, I'm going to be playing um, Horizon Zero Dawn on Tuesday nights and Hades, Hades on Thursday nights. And we've had kind of a big, big change in things with Hades. Um, so that should be fun. So if you like the way that I do things here... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lambda. Yeah, no, I can already feel myself fading and I could kind of feel myself getting a little bit frustrated um, as I was like finishing up my back, my, my backtracking. Um, and I don't want to do that, but that usually is a sign that I'm hungry because I have only eaten once today, <laughs> um, which is the problem with these longer streams is that they don't quite work for me because I get hungry. Um, but yeah, so the Lauren needs food badly. Um, but yeah, if you like the way that I do things, if you like the kinds of streams that I have, please follow me. Um, We've just started Horizon Zero Dawn, so that's like a new stream. We're still in the tutorial section. So if that's a game that you're interested in seeing, you can get caught up from like right from the beginning practically with that. Um, and then uh, Hades has been super fun. Um, lots of gameplay stuff. And, you know, maybe we'll have like a special Delta Rune Lauren tries to play gerbil stream at some point in the future. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to me and having feelings. And also, boy, was there a lot of gayness. I'm really happy. Those girls, I expect, I expect some fan art will be sent to me when I load up our Discord. Um, so as a reminder, speaking of the Discord, for those of you who are still here, if you have not yet joined our Discord, you are welcome to do so. It is a place where you can yell together about spoilers um, and hang out and also have fun with everybody um, and, uh, and also share your favorite non-spoilery fan art with me. <laughs> Oh, Stannis, I hope you enjoy the game. Let us know what you think of it. Um, man, all chapters speedrun is approaching less than an hour. Well, look, I am here to be the opposite of a speedrun. That's what I do. Um, I'm going to go eat dinner and pet my cat and maybe do some laundry and get my brain together. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me. The Deltarune streams have been a ton of fun. I will probably have big feelings about saying goodbye to Deltarune for now. Um, but I will look forward to seeing you for that final chapter um, or for this final, final stream. And we will see where life has taken us by the time the rest of the game comes out. All right. Good night, everybody. Take care of yourselves and I will see you around. Bye. <laughs>